Yo, what's up guys? This is Bunny Muffins. I'm a Next Challenger player, and today we're gonna go ahead and help you guys reach whatever elo you guys wanna be in, um, whether it be like bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond, uh, probably diamond, because you guys, like it says diamond on the thumbnail and the title, um, but we're gonna be playing a game at each elo. This one's gonna be in bronze. We're gonna start out here. The next one's gonna be in silver, then gold, uh, then platinum, then diamond. We're actually going to do two games in diamond because I've noticed that a lot of players, they don't know the fundamentals of the game. And even in masters, I see people making tons and tons of mistakes. Um, and it just goes to show that you don't need to do anything like crazy. You don't need to be like a mathematical genius to do well in team by tactics. And we're going to prove that here. Um, so we started off this game with a chain vest. If you guys don't know what to start, for like items in the early game, go ahead and head on over to my website. I'll leave the link in the description below, but it's bunnymuffins.lol. Every week on Friday, I update um, a tier list of all the comps in the game, compositions in the game, all the items. Um, so if you guys ever have trouble with that stuff, go ahead and check that out. And But yeah, let's just go into this game. I go ahead and pick up the Yasuo here. Yasuo, he can solo a lot of the early game camps. So you have a potential to get up to 10 gold a little easier um, if I get like an eight gold drop here, which um, it's happened before, but it doesn't happen that often. But you know, the one time you don't do this stuff, you get punished, you know? Uh, so don't end up getting it there. So we just pick up the Nami and the Elise. Uh, these units, Elise is pretty good if you wanna go cultist early game. Nami's not really that useful, but since we have the Aurelia, might as well just play it for now. Um, whether you pick up the Vanguard Garen depends if you want to try to win in the early game. Vanguard Garen is pretty good, so I think in hindsight, definitely did want to pick this up. But let's go ahead and skip ahead a little bit. Uh, we get an Evelyn here, so it's really funny that this comes up, because as I was playing the game, my friend wanted to for me to like troll a little bit in this game by playing like Evelyn carry. So we end up getting it really early here. I think I slammed the Guardian Angel on her. And we just wanted to see, like, Evelyn just got buffed on this patch at 3-star, so we wanted to see if, like, 3-star Evelyn can actually do any bit of damage. Uh, so let's go ahead and skip ahead a bit. Um, not too much else to do here. We build a Guardian Angel on her here. Let's watch the fight. And this guy has Garen with Static Shiv. Not the best. So you can see, like, people in early or in lower elos, they don't build the best items, uh, and they don't put them on the best champions. He should have built it on Teemo, if anything, and then played Teemo, put the Static Shiv on him, and like go from there. Like, There's nothing wrong with Static Shiv, but you don't build it on Garen. Also, I might have built Hand of Justice since he has a critical strike instead, but we're not going to judge him too much because um, everyone has different play styles, and he might have been going for like a specific composition. Uh, but since we have the Evelyn, we want to play Cultus here, uh, I think. Aurelia is really good with Janna also, so it's actually like a pretty tough decision. Um, both options are pretty decent, I'd say. Uh, going for like three cultists plus an Aurelia or Janna, or going for like the three enlightened plus an Evelyn. We do have to keep the Evelyn in because we put the item on her and we are just going to be testing out Evelyn this game. Um, but yeah, a lot of people think compositions matter a lot in teamfight tactics, but it really doesn't. You really, again, just need to get the fundamentals down. And if you have that, you could pretty much play anything to pretty good effect. Um, I know like some people are going to be like, oh, but this is in uh, bronze. So it's like, of course it's going to work. But like you could play like anything as long as you have like good damage and good backline uh, at even in like challenger elo. Uh, it's like a common misconception that you can only go for like certain compositions, but like you just need a balance of offense and defense. And that's really all there is to compositions in teamfight tactics. Uh, so we got the Kennen and Akali here. We could do something like a shade with Ninja. That's one. That one's pretty good since we have the Evelyn already. Let's go ahead and skip ahead here to the next round. Uh, I'll go ahead and skip this fight here. Evelyn's pretty good in the beginning of the game, actually, because she often gets her ult off multiple times. But unfortunately, we lose here, so we don't get a win streak here. Um, a lot of people think like streaking is really important, and it is, but it's not the end of the world if you don't have like a perfect lose streak or a perfect win streak. You could still salvage those games into top fours or even some wins sometimes. Um, but I hear a lot of people, they like lose a streak in stage two and they already give up on the game. And I think that's like, it's pretty silly, right? Like <laughs> the game isn't that decided by the early game. It is important and you do get an advantage if you have a perfect streak, but it's not like the... 
the end of the world if that happens. So I end up going for the needlessly large rod because I want to build Hextech Gunblade on my Evelyn. So I just went ahead and picked that up. Uh, but let's skip ahead. We're on this turn here. We see the Jax chosen duelist. I don't really care about that too much, um, but I do level up so that I could play the cultist units, which are super, super strong. So let's skip ahead to the next fight again. Uh, do we end up winning this fight? Doesn't really look like that. Galio jumps down. Evelyn misses her ultimate. Evelyn is like, she doesn't always hit her targets for some reason. And it's really annoying. You guys will see later in this game exactly what I'm talking about. But if you guys are watching this and you're like thinking Evelyn is viable, it is not. But we are just playing it because I wanted to try some new things there. Look at that. Like she ulted there and she missed the Maokai. It just doesn't make any sense at all, right? Maokai was right next to her. But sometimes this stuff happens. Like if I was playing like very seriously, I'd probably pick up this Morgana and go for some Talon build. But again, I'm doing some experiments here. And again, it's just going to show that in these like lower elo lobbies uh, you can get away with like a ton of mistakes and still climb or play things that you like for fun um, it's still all going to be really good um, or it's still all going to work for you to climb uh, going into this next fight this guy's really strong he's got three two-star moonlights which means his diana gets to go to three star because moonlights upgrade their uh, lowest star unit and whoever has an item gets priority for that so this diana got to level three and that's really rough because we don't have a streak. So whenever you don't have a streak, you want to win those games generally. Um, but this guy, he has this very strong Diana. Wow, we actually won. Interesting. This guy lost with three-star Diana. That's really weird. I actually didn't expect that at all. But looking at this shop, we have the Shen and the Sejuani, so we potentially could go like two Adept, but I don't really think that that is optimal. I'm going to go ahead and like keep all the cultists in because I think we could do something like six cultists potentially. Um, that's one of the stronger mid-game compositions, but I'm not going to sell the Janna yet because Janna two-star is, she's like my only two-star unit, so I kind of have to keep her, but let's go ahead and skip here. Uh, we end up getting gold and then we get a crit or, or a glove and a bow. Doesn't really help us at all. We end up getting the Shade Zed though, and I think we sold off the Janna and the Aurelia for interest because we're just forcing Cultus right now. It's not the optimal play, but again, because we're in lower elo, we can get away with some mistakes that we normally can't do. Um, and since I'm forcing an Evelyn build, I just wanted as much gold as possible. Um, and we get this chosen Shade Zed. I'm just going to go ahead and put the QSS and Bow on him. I think now I'm leaning towards like a Zed build uh, because we almost have perfect items for him. Um, but yeah, Chosen Zed, he's one of the strongest Chosens early game. Um, we're going to talk more about this later, I think, in a different game. Um, but as you guys can see here, like the games aren't really that close. We were able to shred through a guy who leveled up to level 6. And this is a mistake I see a lot of lower level players make. They spend all their gold and they don't really make interest. This guy has zero gold, which means he's going to have three less gold per turn compared to me. Or four less gold since I'm, I'm going to be at 40 gold now after I sell like Kennen or something like that. Um, so it's just like one of the common mistakes I see, um, like you shouldn't be at zero gold, like until you're about to die in most cases. So if you guys do find yourself having low economy or like no gold at all, you're probably playing like the guy we just faced where he has like pretty much zero gold. Um, I don't know why I benched the Zed here. Six cultists is strong, but I don't think it is stronger than this Zed. I think I just wanted to play... Wow. wanted to play six cultists for fun so since again i am kind of just like experimenting a little bit and just seeing like what different things look like because on stage three like cultist is just like really really broken but i'm kind of sacrificing my items here by not playing zed uh, we end up winning that one though luckily um, so going into this next one we ha almost have all the ninjas we do need the shen i i don't know why i skipped picking him up before um I think I skipped playing Zed here again. Uh, I think we end up losing this round. This guy's really strong. He's got Hecarim 2, Maokai 2, and he's got 6 Elderwood already. So it's like 6 Cultists versus 6 Elderwood. Uh, I have no 2 stars, so he probably wins that one. Um, but yeah, he ends up winning here. Because again, I have no upgrade, so it's kind of weak. I probably should have just played Zed, honestly. But um, again, since we're... In lower elo, you could get away with a lot more mistakes. I guess this video is one way of proving that. So we want a sword here. We want Hextech Gunblade on our Evelyn, or we want a bow 
on our Zed so we can win streak because rapid fire cannon is really strong on Zed. Um, but let's see what options are available to us. We do have the bow there, so I'm going to try to go for that. And we do end up getting it. Perfect. Uh, so let's skip ahead. Uh, we get the Evelyn upgrade super early, which is really nice. Since we have the Zed with perfect items, we need to put him back in. So I'm going to go ahead and bench the six cultists, play this Riven because we have Keeper if we play the Elise or we have Dust with the Thrush. Both are fine. I'm not really too sure which one is 100% better. Um, both are pretty strong. Uh, but perhaps I could have played Elise over the Pike and get the uh, Keeper bonus because Keeper works really well with Cultus um, if you guys haven't tried that before. So we're going to go ahead and this guy built Assassin Teemo. That's very interesting. Again, look, this guy has zero gold also. Like everyone in Bronze just spends all their gold for no reason because their teams aren't even that strong. Like we're beating him here even though we have 30 gold or 40 gold and he has zero. Um, so it's just like you need to learn how to manage your economy and I'm going to go over that in all these future videos when I'm trying like a little harder instead of forcing like Evelyn, um, which isn't like a good build. But like if you guys check out my leveling guide also, you will learn how to do like all the economy management and all the leveling management so that you know when to level up, when not to level up and all those scenarios. Again, I'll put a link so for all these in the description below. If I forget, leave a comment to tell me I forgot. Uh, but we'll skip ahead here. Uh, so we're facing this guy. He's got three cultists, I think, and he's got a Lulu. Evelyn actually did some work there. She actually killed some units, but you'll see later in the game, she's going to end up doing nothing because I think she's like glitched or something right now. She's, oftentimes she doesn't end up hitting any units uh, as we'll see in later fights, but we'll skip ahead here for now. We get the Cassiopeia. We could go for like maybe four dust with Riven and Evelyn uh, to support her because uh, that's going to be really good. We could even dust spatula the Evelyn eventually, uh, but we get the items here. We do end up getting the spatula, so it's like six dusk Evelyn. If she doesn't carry with those items at six dust, we have four right now, which gives her like I think a 70% ability power up bonus or maybe it's 50%. I can't quite remember right now. Um, then she can't be that good, right? Even though they buffed her a lot. I, I hope it does work out, but I don't know if it will. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead, skip ahead. We can see in this fight here, it's mainly just Zed carrying because he has rapid fire cannon and Quicksilver, which is like the two best items on him. Uh, Evelyn did some work there, but nothing too convincing in my opinion. Uh, but we do end up losing here. Hunter's really good against us. And he's got like a bunch of brawlers also, which have a lot of base health and we don't have any percent health damage on our team yet. So even though we're pretty strong, it's like this guy was just stronger. But we had 50 gold. That guy had, um, let's see how much gold he had. He had 40 gold. So I guess he's like not that far behind us. He's like the one other person who did a good economy this game. The rest of the people, they're probably like in last place now because they just had zero gold all game. Uh, we're going to roll down a little bit here. Whenever you roll down after you level up, so we just leveled up to level seven. You always want to roll down a little bit to get kind of like what's called like a stable board. And stable board, it can mean many different things. It just means uh, overall, it means like having a strong enough board to not lose like every single round against like the relative strength of your opponent. So how strong that is depends or it changes every single game. So if you're playing against uh, some teams who got like really, really lucky, you're going to need a stronger board. But sometimes you could get away with a weak board if everyone else is weak. Um, I hope that made sense. If that didn't, again, leave a comment below. Join, join our Discord. We have a bunch of like people who help out a lot of newer players in that sense there. Uh, but let's go ahead and skip ahead a little more. On this next shop, we don't really need to do anything. Uh, we're trying to hit level 8 now, and since our health is pretty high, um, we don't need to roll down any more gold because we're already at like a decently stable board state because we have the Zed with like really good items. Uh, so I'm going to skip ahead here. We actually go up to 50 gold because I don't plan on going ninjas anymore. So I went ahead and sold my Kennen and my Akali. Uh, we're just going to go some sort of like Dusk Evelyn build at this point because we have the Dusk spatula. Uh, do we end up winning this round here? This guy is like a very interesting Diana. He's again, zero gold, not where you want to be. And he also has Last Whisper on Diana, which is not a very good item on her. So another mistake that a lot of lower level 
players make is they don't know what items to build. And if you are low level, that's perfectly fine. And if you want to learn like what items to build, head on over to my website. I make a updated tier list for every single composition in the game that's strong right now. And I list out like a bunch of different items you can build for each of the champions. So definitely look out for that. Um, if you guys are trying to like get better at the game and climb up to maybe like um, if you're bronze, like try to get to silver first. And then after that, try to get to gold, platinum, diamond, and even higher if you can. Uh, so this carousel here, we want to get another Evelyn item. We really want like a Hextech Gunblade. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get this rod. I think we do end up getting it here. So that's really nice. We also could use Lilia for six dusk right now. So I think we end up playing her as she is right now. Uh, so we're going to skip ahead. We're going to put her in. We're going to put Thresh in. So we got six dust now, as you guys can see on the top left. Uh, super strong combo because it just does so much damage. So if we look at this Evelyn, she should be doing a ton of damage. But I think she's like glitched or something. So she doesn't always hit her target. That time she did. But like there are a lot of fights later in the game where she doesn't from what I remember. Okay, so she's still hitting there. She's actually not doing too badly, but I feel like with six dust, she should be doing more for some reason. Uh, we end up losing to this guy again, but he's level six, 10 gold. You never want to be level six in stage four in like 90% of cases. Uh, it's very rare that you would be, and he's not even going to reach level seven at stage five one either. Uh, right now I'm doing what's called like a slow roll strategy, which is essentially trying to get Evelyn three because I wanted to test her out this patch. And essentially what slow rolling means is I am going to go to my desired level to get that unit. Right now it's level seven. You guys can see on these numbers here, we have a 30% chance to get a three cost unit. So Evelyn's a three cost unit. 30% chance is pretty high. If you go to level eight, it gets a little higher, but level eight costs a lot of money. So instead I'm going to roll down at level seven to try to get Evelyn. I'm going to roll down to 50 every turn. And that's because you roll down to 50 because you can only get up to five gold of interest every turn and each 10 gold gives you one extra interest and you just don't need that or you can't get any more than 50 gold um to get more gold later like if you have 60 gold you don't get six interest you cap out at five gold per turn so that's why you roll down to 50 every turn so next turn i'm going to be at like 62 gold i'm going to roll back down to 52 or sorry down to 50 uh, for Evelyn and then rinse repeat until you hit Evelyn. It's kind of like um, doing the same thing every turn. Even though the turns look busy, it's like I'm kind of doing the same thing every turn. Uh, so let's skip ahead here. We end up getting like two Negatrons and a uh, Chain Vest. So not the best items because we wanted a sword to get Hextech Gunblade on the Evelyn. But we'll just go ahead and build the tank items on Riven and then the Ionic on Lilia, I'm going to end up selling this Lilia and putting the Ionic Spark on my Riven later. Uh, but I just need to find a new Lilia for that first. So again, we're doing the slow roll. We're also picking up Thresh since it's pretty easy to three star him. So the way to get a three star, you get... Uh, so to get a two star, you get three of one unit. To get a three star, you need three level twos of that unit. So you need nine copies of that unit total. Um, okay, this Evelyn, yeah, she's not doing that much damage with the six dust bonus. She did like 700 there. Like, she has a ton of ability power, and it's just very, very lackluster against this guy. This guy is super, super strong. He has Ash 2, Kindred 2, his Warwick 2. Almost his whole team is upgraded, and we don't have Evelyn 3 yet, so we're going to be weaker than him because he's level 8. Um, but notice how he hasn't built any of his items. You always want to build all your items after Stage 5 or during Stage 5 because you notice how we got like individual item components on like the neutral rounds, which are like the Krugs, Wolves, and Wraith Camp. Um, also on the carousels, we got item components. But after stage five, you only get full items. So you literally can't build anything else with those items until like stage six carousel. But that's like getting a little too far ahead of ourselves right now. Um, but yeah, on stage five one, always build all the items that you can that turn. Um, that's why I ended up building the Ionic Spark, even though I wanted to save the rod for a Hextech Gunblade. It's just because after a certain point, you just need to build all your items because you're not going to get any more item components. All right, so we're one off this Evelyn. Sorry, I've been talking this whole time. I haven't really been explaining my play, but we've been doing the same thing every turn. We just roll down to 50 to try to get the desired units that we want. 
which in this case is Evelyn and Thresh. We ended up getting the Thresh, so we get a three-star Thresh, which is pretty cool, right? But now we want the Evelyn, because again, I wanted to test out Evelyn on this new patch and just see if she's actually a viable carry. So we get this new Lilia. We're going to swap it out, sell the old Lilia to put the item on someone who uses the Ionic Spark much better, which is Riven. Um, but since we have only one more Evelyn left, I'm going to go ahead and roll down till I hit it. Um, just because it's a really big power spike. Power spike is like, it's just a term people use for getting like a lot stronger in a very short amount of time. Unfortunately, we're not hitting it. So that's a little unlucky considering we're pretty much going for uh, Evelyn carry right now. Uh, but we're not actually doing too badly in these fights. Let's look at this one and then we'll go ahead and skip ahead on the next rounds. Because um, we're pretty much doing the same thing every doing the same thing every round. We're not really changing up our strategy that much. All right, skip ahead here. We're on this, see what I mean? On this stage five carousel, and you could tell what stage it is up here on the top. Um, you can only get full items. So that's why that other person, person should have built all his items beforehand. I end up going for the Chalice of Harmony. It's a good item because you can give Evelyn even more ability power, and that's pretty much all she needs at this point in the game. Um, I just want to give her the six dust bonus and the Chalice for even more ability power. Chalice, it's like, it hits your adjacent unit, so it's like a team-oriented item. Um, so it's like, if I put it, I'll show you guys here once the next round starts. So I put it on my Zillion, and then Zillion's gonna buff the ability power of himself, Thresh, and Evelyn. So it's a super, super strong support item. It's a way to make your carry even stronger, even if you have full items on them. But we want to save the third item slot for like Hexec Gunblade or like uh, Hand of Justice so that she could get some healing for her ultimate, which is what we need at the end of the day. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip this fight here. I think we end up winning that one. We just have too many resistances for that guy. Uh, we end up getting the Jin, so I definitely want to try to play this somehow, um, especially since he has the Rapid Fire Cannon. But I think I just keep him on my bench because I'm going to wait to level up and then play him after that. Uh, looking at this guy, this guy has the, this is the Moonlight player. So we ended up trying to go for Silas carry, which I've never actually seen before. But yeah, he's level six, zero gold. It's just, you can't be level six during stage five. Uh, you can't even be really level six during stage four. Uh, you're just going to bleed out way too quickly because your team's going to be way too weak. So it's just things to keep in mind. Also is Diana, again, not the best items at all. I would personally go for something else. Uh, we end up getting a Quicksilver Sash here. Don't really care too much about that. I think we just go ahead, level up, put it on our, on our Jin or our Zillion. I don't really think it matters too much which one it is. Probably Jin is better because it blocks the Adepts that might affect him. Adepts, it pretty much just slows down the attack speed of the enemy team. So you don't want Jin's attack speed to be slowed down because he's really strong. But I, Zillion's also fine to put this item on because I'm not relying on Jin for my damage because I'm running Evelyn carry. Um, Zillion, he's good to put some defensive items on because the longer he lives, the more ultimates he gets off, which will heal your team the most or revive your team the most. So we do get the three star Evelyn here. Let's see if she actually does anything. Okay. She did zero damage to the kindred cause she was already dead and she, she did kill the Ash. She did one thing this fight. It's not too bad. She's going to kill this Nunu. All right. She's not too bad. She's not good. But she's not too bad because we invested a lot of resources into this. We rolled down so much gold. She herself cost three times nine gold. So we spent 27 gold on this unit for just buying her, not including the gold we used to roll down. We delayed going to level eight to get her. So overall, like for what we got from her, she's not that strong. So the experiment for that is kind of done. So let's skip ahead a tiny bit into the next round. We'll watch some of these other fights. Um, we'll see how much she did here. She's in the back over here right now. She ended up doing decent amount of damage there. I know it says she did 4,000 damage, but like that person only had like 500, 500 health. So it's like, did it really do 4,000 damage if they only have four or 500 health? Um, but I guess she's doing okay here. I can't like expect too much from her because like, look, she's not even killing this Hecarim. Oh man, she's so bad. <laughs> she didn't even get her ult off there. Uh, that's a shame. 
<laughs> all right, don't try Evelyn at home, guys, because it's just not working out at all. <laughs> Let's go ahead and skip on to the next fight. I think here I'm trying to reach level 9 because there's not much for me to roll for here other than Zillion. Um, another thing to keep in mind when rolling is that you only want to roll when you have things to actually hit. Going for legendaries at level 8 is really hard to do, so you really only want to do that if you're, like, really struggling. All right, let's see. Okay, Evelyn did well there. She killed three units. This was, like, the first fight she actually carried. Okay, that was pretty good. Look at that damage. 20, almost 24,000. <laughs> That's nuts. All right, let's go into the next thing. Uh, we wanted a Hextech Gunblade here. Is there one here? There is not. Jeweled Gauntlet would have been funny to see, so she would do even more damage. But I think like Spear Shojin is pretty good here. We could throw that on our Thresh because he's going to get a ton of lanterns out to get a ton of shields out. We could see here like, um, yeah, Thresh did a lot of, he does a lot of shields at like 6 Dust because Dust gets a lot of ability power for free. Uh, we'll just go ahead and put that on him. Let's see if Evelyn actually does anything in this fight. She's in the back now over here. Does she kill the Ash? Okay, she kills the Ash. So I, I guess she's not doing too badly. But, like, other carries, they just do a lot more, which is why, like, no one plays Evelyn um, if they're, like, truly trying their hardest. Uh, but if someone else makes Evelyn work somehow, let me know in the comments below. Uh, but this game, she does seem a little lackluster. I know we're still winning, but, like, Riven's doing a lot, Jin's doing a lot, like, Zillion's doing a lot, Cassiopeia's doing a lot. It's not really, like, the Evelyn who's, like, carrying the game considering we built our entire team around her okay she did decently there she killed like two to three units she's not bugging out like what i was talking about before like this ash def definitely did more than my evelyn oh no we're watching a different fight right now uh i wanted to we we lost that fight how did we lose that fight see what i mean like the ash and like his set just outplayed our entire team. Wait, the Nunu killed us? Now I'm just confused. All right. <laughs> we get, we finally got the Hextech Gunblade, though. Let's see if that helps us at all. Again, in our next games, we're going to be doing... A, this was a bronze game. We're going to be doing a silver game after this. Gold, platinum, and then diamond game. So two diamond games, actually, because I felt like some of you guys who like really want to push the diamond, because like that's what I put in the thumbnail... Uh, if you really want to hit diamond, like definitely check out those future videos, but whatever rank you want, just go to, uh, skip ahead into those videos and, uh, you'll be able to tell or get a bunch of tips on like how to get there and like what you need to be doing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put like half the items on set, half the items on ribbon. Uh, I did get the chosen ribbon. So we get the two keeper bonus. It's like a small power spike since we're in the last round of the game. Um, you always just want to just make your team as strong as possible. Um, but let's see this Evelyn. All right, I guess she did do well this game. But, like, there are just so many other better carries, you know. <laughs> like, we actually lost to the third place guy somehow. I'm not really sure how. But, yeah, that's, this is the first game. Again, stick around if you guys want to learn how to play at higher levels. A lot of the common mistakes we saw this game was people not knowing how to manage economy. And that's, like, a very fundamental skill that you really need to learn and we're going to be going even deeper into that in all these next games what you'll see here so yeah uh, let's just get into game number two so now we're into the game i'm gonna purposely not take anything on the carousel just in case you guys get like kind of you feel you get like screwed over on the first carousel so i'm actually not going to take anything let everyone else get everything first i'm just gonna wait in the middle and like you'll notice that people left glove up which is very interesting because glove is a very usable item someone actually got a negatron cloak instead so you can see at this elo people might not have the best carousel decisions um, and again you guys can check the what you want on the carousel on my website at bunnymuffins.lol and every week during the meta snapshot i post what i think you guys should be going for each carousel so let's skip ahead a bit we got a very interesting start here we got two pikes and a silas um, so that's a six gold start in the first round. That's exactly what you want. Um, so from here, I'm thinking like maybe we could play Cultists or Assassins with the Diana or the TFs. I like Cultists a little more. Assassins I find are a little weird, but like they're playable early game. But um, I always want to keep a balance of frontline and tanks. And if I don't get the third Cultist, uh, you're not going to have any frontline. So I want to keep the Brawlers for that reason to keep a good balance of frontline and backline. So let's go into the next round. Um, so we got the TF here, which is very lucky. Uh, we have like one two star already. So we're going to go ahead and pick that up. The rest of the stuff, 
you don't really need any of it. Maybe you could use uh, Maokai to swap out the other Maokai because he's holding the glove and you never really want glove on Maokai. Um, but skipping ahead a little more, um, you'll notice that we got into the new shop and we got a rod and uh, yeah, that's it from the carousel. So we have a crit rod and a belt. So you can build a couple different items from that. And again, like you guys saw already, we got the pike. Um, for the two star pike obviously that's exactly what you want any early game two star is going to make the life a ton easier um, but we don't really have any synergies so i think we're just going to go ahead i think we're going to play the janna here um, just because you just want to play the strongest units that you can and that is better than playing a silas or maokai at this moment i also don't want to bench anyone for um, playing two brawler because that's going to be weak as well and ideally you'd level up here so that you could play the pike and the Twisted Fate that are two star with like the two brawlers, but we don't really get that option here. So I'm gonna go ahead and build a Morello Namicon because Morgana is really good in this meta and Morello, it could kind of fit in a lot of different builds. And whenever you have a strong team like this, you generally always wanna build items in order to generate a win streak. And win streak gives you a lot of gold, all that type of stuff. So let's skip ahead a little bit to next turn. Uh, we did end up losing that fight, which is a little awkward, but because like our team's really strong, but we weren't able to level up, so maybe that's why. Here's kind of like a weird point. I think we do want to level up because again, like even though we lost the first round, we built an item. We have two two stars, one of which is Pike. So I do definitely think that we want to go ahead and level up here. Yep, that's what I end up doing. And then just playing as strong of units as we can. So I pick up a chosen here. Chosens are good for wind streaking, but mm, I actually didn't do that. Oh, I missed it. I <laughs> I didn't see the um the cultists in before so a lot of these early game synergies such as cultists are really strong and we missed the jarvan you'd want to play jarvan over janna because keeper and cultist is a super strong combination as you guys will see in a second not this fight but the fight after um but yeah galio comes in he unfortunately didn't do that much damage because fiora was invulnerable but it's a pretty easy win there but next fight with the keeper buff which gives your team a shield cultist is going to be even better so let's go ahead and skip to there um, so in the shop here, we bought the Callista, but I think our team is stronger than the Callista because even though she's a three cost cultist, we want the keeper buff in. And the reason why keeper's so good with cultist specifically is because cultist comes out like the Galio comes out when your team's taken a certain amount of damage and that includes shield damage. So once you get the shields up, like your team won't be dead by the time Galio comes out, as we'll see here. So just some things to keep in mind, like know the early game synergies that are strong, but also know like the complementary synergies that work really well with them. Um, see, look at that. My whole team's at full life except for one person, but Galio gets to be summoned. So it's like a super strong combination. Oftentimes your team just like dies halfway through and it's like feels kind of useless. Um, but that's not the case here. So we're on the carousel. We got the crit glove. We're last pick. So unfortunately, we don't have much choice in what we get. Um, so we just kind of have to wait and see what options are left. Let me go ahead and skip ahead for that. Um, so we have the belt. Sorry, we have the uh, armor or the negatron. So I opted for the armor here. I don't think it makes that much of a difference what you got there. Um, both of those are pretty even in strength for my team right now. Negatron's good because it builds Quicksilver Sash with my crit glove, but I think armor is better because it builds a lot more items. As you guys know, on my item tier list for this specific patch, I rated it a lot higher. So just keep that in mind um, as we move forward. So I end up getting the Janna here, which is pretty big. Janna is such a good unit. And we also have the choice of playing the Aurelia for two Enlightened. I'm not really sure that Aurelia is stronger than the rest of the team here so far, so I'm not going to go ahead and play her yet. Um, but Janna 2, very strong early game unit. So we have like the strongest early game possible right now. The only downside is that we don't have a chosen unit and we kind of have no gold. Like this guy has 20 gold over us, so he has a lot more than us. But all our gold is on our board. So that's always a better thing to have. Um, it just so happened that this game we got like a pretty good start. So we're able to win all our rounds. Goes to show how important losing this first round was. We'd have like a ton more gold if that didn't happen. Um, but going ahead into next round, uh, we could kind of skip ahead a little bit. We get the Talon there. Here, let me move back a bit. Um, so we get the Talon here, and obviously that's exactly what you want whenever you're going for like an Enlightened build. Um, it's actually a really tough decision if I should even play him yet. I don't think I ended up playing him, but looking back in it, I think our board before was actually stronger. 
with the TF and the Elise, just because the Cultist Keeper combination is so incredibly strong early game. Also, Talon, like, I don't have any swords for him, so he's not going to be, like, as critical as he could be. Um, but yeah, this fight is going to be, like, pretty much a piece of cake. I go ahead and put the Crit Glove on the TF, um, just because, like, I'm about to sell him because I'm going to swap my team out pretty soon. But yeah, this game, I don't think this one's even close, right? Uh, the Hextech, Gunblade... Katarina almost brought it back, but even that wasn't enough. Um, so pretty easy one here. Uh, so let's go into the next round. Wait, we actually lost that one. Okay, I guess we could lose with this team. So that's a little weird. Like having two two stars and losing two rounds in the last round, like two, two cost two stars, that's like very rare. Um, so I'd say like that's kind of unlucky. So we didn't get the best start this game even though our board is incredibly strong just because like we don't have a streak and Yeah, our econ is no gold. So this is actually like a pretty rough start So hopefully if you guys have a lot of games where you're like very low on economy and uh, You're not really too sure what to do in those types of games Maybe this will be like a good learning opportunity. I don't really need anything on my bench. We could pick up the Jinxes. Morello does work in sharpshooters, but I think since we have the Talon already, we don't really care about all this other stuff. Okay, so this is a very important moment because we see we have a Yumi Chosen, and Yumi Chosen is very, very strong because you could go ahead and build blue buff on her. Uh, blue buff with Chosen Yuni, she only has like 30 mana, I think, when she's chosen because she gets her mana reduced. So it ends up being like a very, very, very strong combination. So, so strong that I take out the cultists and the keepers um, just to go ahead and play the Yumi Janna combo. Even though I'm at three Mystic, it doesn't really matter. All the shields and healing that these two provide outweigh whatever you get from the keeper buff. Um, but yeah, I'm going to keep uh, Twisted Fate in just because we don't really have an item holder for this Morello Namacon. Uh, so we're just going to keep him in until we find a better unit there. Um, so let's go ahead, skip through this fight. Uh, we ended up winning that one. Um, so the opening shop here, we get a Shen. Shen's obviously what you want in this composition. It looks like now I'm going for the Enlightened Talon composition. Um, so we'll go ahead and replace a Tia, put the Morel and Namakon, I think on Pike because Pike's the only person who can use this item. And then just wait on these items here. So we want as many swords as we can at this point because we want to itemize Talon. We already have the Morello Namakon on the Morgana, so we'll just have to kind of wait and see what happens there. But like, I think you want to prioritize blue buff on this next carousel because again, it is so strong on Yumi. Blue buff, it just like, you guys just have to try it out yourself. On like certain champions like Chosen Janna or Chosen Nami, uh, it's just like an unstoppable healing combination and like a lot of people who are in like silver or something Which is what this game is don't really know any of those combinations. So if you like leverage some of that knowledge in this video um, You'll be able to get an advantage in like a couple of your games um, So we end up losing this round this guy has duelist duelist does really well against teams with low damage Which is us right now. Uh, we also have four mystic against a full physical damage team. So that's another factor all right, nothing much to see here in this shop. We're, let's just go ahead and skip that. Um, go on to the next fight. Uh, I think we... So it looks like we're going to win this one, so we'll skip ahead to the carousel. And again, on this carousel, you want to get the blue buff. Um, so that's the tier. Unfortunately, we're last pick. Even though we lost three rounds, we're still last pick. That's another very rare thing. It's because the fights we lost, they were so close. We lost to a level one Garen and uh, ZZ Rot Portal. So we lost three life there, and then we had an another small loss on Sage 3-2. Both kind of unlucky, because we should be higher pick because we lost three rounds in a row. Um, and yeah, someone took the tier there, so we don't manage to get that this round. Um, so I think here I end up going for the Negatron Cloak, and the reason why I do that is because we already have a Chain Vest. I don't really feel like building Thorn Mail this game because it doesn't really fit in this composition. So worst case, I could turn this into Gargoyle Stoneplate or a Quicksilver or a Chalice of Power. Um, all three of those are pretty good items. I really should build an item here, but I don't think I end up doing that. Um, whenever you have four items on your bench, you generally want to build an item. Um, that's like one of the rules that I normally state out. So if you aren't like that confident in your ability of like choosing 
good items like just make an item whatever it is whenever you have four com or more components um, sometimes i greed a little bit because i'm going for specific compositions but you don't have to do that um, i should probably slam either chalice of power or gargoyle stone plate here um, let's see what i end up doing okay so i do slam the gargoyle stone plate i think both options are fine i think i wanted to save the tier for the blue buff for yumi just in case we get it because again it's like literally like, you get on a huge streak if you get that, so it's something to keep in mind. All right, so moving on to the next round, we have the other Shen. Nothing much else to do in the shop. We're level 6 right now. Uh, we want to save up for level 7, but we have no gold. Normally, at this point in the game, you have, like, 50 gold, and you're level 6 with, um, I think, 6 or 8 experience. But we're at 2 experience, and we have 36 gold because our early game economy was so bad, and we didn't win streak in Stage 2. We'd have a lot more gold if we win streaked in Stage 2, but, like... Hey, sometimes it doesn't happen. So we ended up spending all our money, but not getting anything out of it from the streak. So very important game to learn from because a lot of people like, sometimes these games just happen. We get unlucky. We forget to manage our streaks. Um, one of the two happens and we just have no econ from the start of the game uh, because we got so many upgrades. So again, you'll want to see that it's still possible to come back from these games uh, based off of this example at least. We end up winning this one, so we have a small streak going into the Wolves, which isn't too bad, um, but let's see what ends up happening here. Uh, let me go ahead and skip ahead. Alright, so we got the Shen 2. That's pretty lucky. Uh, you normally don't get like a 4 cost upgrade this early. Uh, do keep in mind like this is the least important 4 cost. Um, so we didn't, like, desperately need that, but it's still, I'm not going to complain about it, you know? Um, if we had, like, Talon 2 or Morgana 2, that'd be a different story. All right, so we did end up getting the blue buff here. So we got a crit, a Negatron, and a tier. So I'm going to slam that blue buff on Yumi. I could build Thieves Gloves on someone or Quicksilver Sash. Um, both options are fine. You could also wait around. Maybe you get an Infinity Edge for Talon and Last Whisper for Talon. That's going to be a really good combination. Also, a lot of people, they normally level up to level 7 on 4-1 automatically. But again, this is this game is a lot different from a typical game because we had no economy this game. So I'm going to go ahead and wait till 4-2 or 4-4 uh, to, before I level up. Uh, just some things to keep in mind. Like You got to make like minor adjustments. Um, each game but let's look at this blue buff yumi you guys will see what i'm talking about like my whole team is just not going to die yumi always targets the lowest health unit on her team and then she targets the furthest unit away from that target but like with the janna shields with the yumi shields like it's very hard to kill my team i think we just ran out of damage against this guy because he's got a katarina with healing um, and gunblade so it's a little unlucky there um, but that's why this fight's so close normally they're not as close as this uh, just because that combination is is just way too, way too powerful. All right, so we're go, going to go ahead to, and level up here just because like you need to hit level 7 at some point to get better drops. But I do not think we are rolling uh, because we just don't have money to right now. And we're 90 health. So a lot of times you need to roll when you're low health. So we, if we were like 42 health, we'd go ahead and roll down to like 20 or something like that. Um, I think I rolled down there because I had 36 gold, so it's kind of like an awkward amount. I wanted to roll down to 30, and then because I rolled down to 30, I was able to buy a lot of things, so I was at 27 gold, so I was like, oh, let me roll down again, down to 20. Um, so that was my thought process there, in case you're wondering why I, like, rolled when I'm at a weird amount of gold. Um, you always want to play around the thresholds, and sometimes you hit more units than you planned on doing before. And then you just like roll down again to the next threshold. It's perfectly okay to do that in some games. And again, we got countered here because Yasuo is just really good against teams without any damage. So we are for sure losing this one. Um, but once you get the Morgana, once you get the Talon 2, it becomes a lot easier. Um, in this next shop, we don't really need anything there. So we're going to go ahead and skip that. Um, let's go to the next fight. I end up buying these two units just because it thins out the pool, but you don't really need to do that. Sometimes it often confuses you. Um, it is debatable. I could have sold these two units and the Lux, but I need Lux eventually, but she's not like a critical unit. So I could have done that to make 31 gold to get to the next interest threshold. Um, so if you guys do that in your games, I think that plays fine as well. Um, 
But I think right now you just want to plan to try to go to level eight because again, we're high health, so we're not in danger. We're only losing to our counter matchup, which is the Yasuo guy. Um, so it's like, we're pretty safe here. Again, we're last pick in the carousel. So a lot of games, like you're not going to get the item you want because you're last pick. It happens. Like at least you have high health. You just have to make sure you play around that. Um, so we have two gloves and a Negatron. So you definitely want a tier uh, because we need to build some offensive items. We have one tank item, one support item in the blue buff and a damage item in the Morello Namicon, but we don't have a Morello user yet. So we need one damage item for Talon um, in order to try to like essentially not die. So we get the Lux there. Cassiopeia is interesting. Um, because you could potentially go for six mystic, but I don't really think we need that this game I only really go for like six mystic if I'm in a 1v1 scenario um, Just because it's like You sacrifice a lot if you go for it um, I'm surprised I didn't build the hand of justice yet. I wonder why I'm waiting on that I think my thought process this game was since I am at such high health I don't need to build my items yet so I could wait until Raptors to get like build perfect items for a bigger late game um, but if you build Hand of Justice here, I wouldn't mind that play at all. Uh, let's go ahead and skip on to uh, Stage 5 once. We end up losing that round. We're at 39 gold, so we're probably going to make 40 gold here by selling the Akali. Um, but let's go ahead and skip ahead because um, there isn't much decision-making there. Um, we end up getting the Lux. Uh, always bench the units that you plan on selling during the Raptor rounds because uh, if you want to make the next interest gold you could always just go ahead and sell it and since i'm about to roll at least if not next turn very shortly um it's fine if i sell pike as long as i pick up a new item holder for him like i could always worst case put it on lux even if it's not super super ideal uh, but let's skip ahead so we got a negatron and we got a sword sword is perfect um, i'm gonna go ahead and roll down a tiny bit just because i only need if you guys saw before, we had two Talons and uh, uh, we need one more Morgana um, just so we can get rid of this Morello Namicon. And it was too expensive to level up to level 8 at that point. So I think I wanted to roll down to around 20 this turn um, just to see what would happen. Um, but we end up hitting absolutely nothing. So it's kind of depressing um, until the Talon at the very end. So it does suck. We did waste like a ton of gold there. Um, so it's a little... A little weird. And I know I took out four Enlightened, but I really just needed someone to use the Morella Namicon, and Sejuani was in my shop, so I just went ahead and built that. Um, but yeah, from these items, I build IE. It's the best item on Talon. Hand of Justice is also really good. And then even though Dragon Claw isn't that great on him, it's not horrible. Um, it's just like a generic tank item that you build from leftovers, so it's not the end of the world that you have that item on your Talon. He is two star. And it's kind of like, I just got to make the best of a bad scenario. This one guy over here, the 100 health person, has been win streaking the whole game. So um, you definitely want to recognize when to play for second <clears throat> and when to play for first uh, in, these, in these games. Uh, so here we get the Ari, sell the Sejuani, put in the Ari, put the Morella Namicon on her. And now I want to try to get to level 8 to put in 4 Enlightened. Uh, eventually and hopefully find this Morgana. All right, so let's go to the next couple rounds quickly uh, just because there's like not much to see in these fights because it's like we're just waiting to hit a Morgana. I go ahead and pick up the extra Talon just in case I get uh, Talon 3. Sometimes it happens, oftentimes it doesn't, but if it's not costing you any interest, just go ahead and pick that up. Uh, let's go into the carousel. So on the carousel, we have all our talent items. We have a support item on Yumi. We have a tank item on Shen. So we could go for either an additional Morgana item or go for another tank item for Shen. ZZ Rot, for example, is pretty good on him. So he gets a taunt right away in the beginning of the fight. Another stone plate wouldn't be too terrible. Zeke's is good on everyone. Zephyr's pretty good too, just like as a... Um, support item, but I go ahead and go for the ZZ Rot just because ZZ Rot is just really strong right now. Um, and again, you guys can learn which items are strong, which items are weak based on my item quadrant on the meta snapshot that I post every Friday. All right, so over here, um, I don't think we end up doing anything. We're, I plan to go to level eight, I think, um, I guess right now. Hmm. It was debatable to go level eight on stage six one. 
Um, but maybe I got scared because we're a little low health. I think both plays are fine. I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. Um, but I just rolled until I got the Ezreal. He's a blue buff holder. Um, or not blue buff. He's a Morello Namakon holder. Uh, so he's useful in that in that sense. Uh, we got the Yone, which is good because he fits in our Adepts. Um, so that was like kind of lucky. But like we really need Morgana, right? She gives us four Enlightened and she's like really good with the Morello Namakon. But like level one Ezreal is still really, really good. And um, sometimes he's better until you get Morgana too. It depends on the matchups that you have. Um, but this Talon, he's doing work. You guys notice that like we don't have perfect items on Talon, but he's still doing a lot of work. A lot of people, they greed their items just to try to go for perfect items. And um, sometimes that ends up costing people more than it helps them. So like just something to keep in mind, you don't need perfect items to win every game. You just need a strong team and a lot of health to win uh, fights through like fight RNG. Uh, so let's skip ahead here just because there's there's really not much uh, decision making anymore towards the late game. It's mainly just like positioning and stuff. Um, so one thing to keep in mind when you're playing this build is you want Talon to attack like an easy, easily killed target. You don't actually need him to jump to the enemy carries because of the way Talon's ability works is he just... After he kills someone with his ultimate, he targets the person with the most um, damage dealt on the enemy team. So he pretty much is always going to target their carries eventually. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. So here, you could roll down to zero to get like Morgana 2. It's a little risky because I'm only rolling for like one unit. Like yeah, I could upgrade the legendaries, but at level 8, it's kind of rare. And like this guy already has Yone 2. Um, so I think here I planned on going level 9 and just playing an extra unit for like a small power spike. I don't think I'm getting first place in this game because this guy's at 89 health and I'm at 40. Um, so that was my thought process there. Um, so I'm actually going to go ahead and skip ahead until we reach level 9. Um, just to get, show you guys like when an appropriate time to hit that level is. Um, at least in this example. So here we're still 70 gold away. Like... We don't have anyone to put in yet, so we're not going to level up yet. Um, all right, let's go ahead and skip to the carousel. Uh, so here, we're 17 health. We obviously are the lowest, but we just want to pick up uh, maybe like an Ezreal item or a Morgana item. Um, I end up going for Assassin Spat here. That way we could drop... Um, I think we're playing Pike. No, we're not even playing Pike. So um, that one helps out talent a little bit it's kind of like a support item in a way because it gives him the uh, assassin trait which is like obviously a good trait on him because it increases his critical strike damage um, so we're gonna go ahead and put that on yone just because it's um pretty strong and since i hit that other talon it gave me an incentive to roll down um, to try to hit talon three as like a desperation win condition because we're at 17 health which is either like one or two lives. It really depends on the situation. Um, if you take a big loss, it's one life. If you take two small ones, it's two lives. Um, end up se selling the Ezreal there, but I don't think... Um, like, it's tough to say. A lot of people like Ezreal more than Morgana, but I feel like with the four Enlightened with the Talon carry right now, um, I'm more leaning towards the Morgana than like the random legendary composition. If you go for Ezreal, you generally play like you drop Janna and then you go for a bunch of random legendaries. But since I'm playing for Mystic, I didn't feel like doing that this game. Um, so just one thing to keep in mind. We have the two talent two stars, so we could potentially upgrade that. Um, now that we have the Yone two, um, and we have the, uh, we're still looking for Morgana. That's when I felt comfortable rolling down to try to find uh, all the four cost units. Um, like sometimes plans change. Like I did plan on going level nine initially, but since I'm one off the Talon now, it's like roll to zero every single game. Um, and like we finally hit the Morgana. So it's like, it's not like we had nothing to roll for. Uh, it's just dependent on like when you want to commit to that. So one thing to note, I should probably move my Yumi back a bit because, um, actually, no, never mind. I forgot she has blue buff, so you don't need to move her. Sometimes you need to move her in order to get the uh, targeting on her spell a little better. But since she ults right at the beginning of the fight, it doesn't matter. Um, I don't know if you guys saw, Yone had a huge ultimate that crowd controlled the entire enemy team. 
Um, you always want to try to position that so that he hits the most units as possible. I know that sounds very obvious, but it's like a lot of people don't do it. So it's like you kind of have to say it. And since this guy is all grouped up together, you want him to um, jump over here and then attack over at this angle. Um, if he didn't have the assassin spatula, you'd put him right in front of their team on this square over here and put Aurelia over there to disarm everyone. Guardian Angel, obviously a very good item. I think I end up putting that on Yone just because I want to itemize him, you know? Um, so we're just going to roll down more for the Talon 3. I don't think we end up hitting him, which is a little unfortunate. That would be the best win condition, obviously. Um, but yeah, just I think I put this on Yone. Um, but let's go ahead and skip ahead. Uh, some people do frontline Morgana and put Guardian Angel on her. And the logic behind that is with the Enlighten buff, Enlightens gain more mana, and you gain mana when you take damage. So putting Morgana on the front line makes her get her ultimate out a lot faster, which gives the Morello and Dazzler proc uh, much earlier than it normally does. So you could have done that, but since I have the Yone 2 and Yone is such a strong champion, I go ahead and just put it on him instead, because he's got a bunch of other items and he's going to probably make a little more use of it than Morgana in this specific game. Um, so again, we roll down for the Talon. We see nothing. Always scout and position around the enemy team during these uh, last few rounds. Um, so I ended up moving him here. I kind of guessed on who I'd face. It's random when there are three people. Like, there's the same chance for facing everyone. He's still probably going to get a decent ultimate, but not like the amazing one he had before. So just some things to keep in mind. You can't just position for one person. Sometimes you have to do... Uh, position for two people like against this guy i'd also want my lux on the left hand side so that she ults more people in the corner um, sometimes these little things really do matter but since we have the two star legendaries now and like our whole team's two star we're about to get talon three uh, the game gets like a lot easier so we made a comeback one of the guys had 89 life and we had 17 and we ran it all the way back um all at 17 all at 17 health so it's like it's a pretty big comeback like <laughs> and remember this game you guys could say we high rolled it because we had the pike 2 early which is obviously really strong we had the janet 2 early but we didn't actually get a win streak from that so it ended up being pretty weak because we had no gold so when you get no gold like let's try to think of what we learned from this game when you have no gold sometimes you need to consider leveling up to level 7 at stage 4 2 instead of going to level 7 at 4 1 um, because, like, again, you had no gold, so you need to level up at a more optimal time uh, to get more gold and, like, just sack around. And we had a lot of health, so that means that we weren't forced to roll either. Even though we lost a lot of rounds, we were still at, like, I think, like, 80-some life during Stage 4. So whenever that happens, you don't need to be desperate and spend all your gold. You could instead wait and go level 8 and roll there. And, again, no Talon 3. We were able to win this one. Didn't have the best Talon items either. And we had like Morello on Pike the whole time. We didn't get the Morgana for a very, very long time. So I'd say overall this game, um, considering all the things that happened, like obviously we are in silver, so it's easier to win these games for me. But um, it just goes to show that with good principles, even if you get like a bad start with no win streaks, um, you have no gold in the beginning of the game in stage four, uh, you don't hit your desired units such as Morgana. Uh, you got to find replacements for users of those items. We use Pike, we use Sejuani, we use Ari for a turn, and then we use Ezreal before we finally put in the Morgana. Um, then we went for like some of the legendary units, um, and then we also rolled down when we hit a lot of Talons instead of going for level 9 um, to try to hit Talon 3 star to get our win guaranteed. Didn't end up hitting it, but again, since we're in lower elo, sometimes you don't need to hit that stuff. But like his team's pretty strong too. Look at these two guys. Like, three-star Teemo and the rest two-star with two legendaries upgraded. This guy has Lee Sin upgraded, and the rest of his team is two-star except for Set. So it's like we didn't face weak teams. Like, these teams were, like, their late game was pretty decent, actually. So um, overall, decent game. Um, let's get into the next one. All right, now we're into game three. I'm going to go ahead and not pick anything up on Carousel again. Um, let's see what we're left with. Um, so... Probably either a chain or a negatron. Oh, actually two chains. And interesting how people go for the go for the negatron instead. I feel like chain's a little better in the most recent patches, but again, this all depends on items and uh, how strong each composition is. Uh, so again, check on my website bunnymuffins.lwl/meta. I talk over every single good item there is, and 
Pretty much if you just follow that, you'll know what to get on the first carousel. So we got a Jinx here pretty early, which is pretty nice. Uh, we could also sell the two Garens for the two Brawlers, such as Tom Kench and Maokai. Uh, that actually arguably might be better than keeping the Vanguards, uh, just because you are guaranteed to have a tank synergy. But I think both are fine. You could also argue that you get like a higher chance to get a two-star unit on the Garen. Luckily, we got a couple bit of gold to get the... Tom Kench and the Maokai anyways. Um, so now since we have the Jinx, I always like sh sharpshooters recently. So I'm going to go ahead and keep her. You, again, you want to balance the front line and back line. We got the Wukong here. So that typically means I'm going to be trying to go for the like two sharpshooter, two vanguard type of strategy. Um, but let's just skip ahead a tiny bit. Uh, we ended up getting a glove there. And then in our next shop, we had um, a Teemo. And we also have the Garen still. So we're going to go ahead, sell some stuff to level up. Um, I think I end up selling the Nidalee here just because I already have two sharpshooters. If I get a third one, it's not really that useful um, because you don't get additional synergies from it. So we're just going to go ahead, throw in the Garen. Also, if I win, I have a Nidalee in my shop, so I could just go ahead and use that. So normally when I play sharpshooters, I generally try to build as many items as early as I can. Unfortunately, not much to build here. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the glove onto the Jinx because that's either becoming a Jeweled Gauntlet or a Quicksilver Sash or a Hand of Justice. They're all pretty good items on her. End up winning this first round. We picked up the Nidalee. Um, next round we get Divine Jax. Unfortunately, we can't really afford it right now. It's a really good champion. It's a pretty good chosen. So if you do have room for it, you generally want to pick these up. I could have maybe done something goofy like maybe run Jax and Lux this round. Um, that probably could have been stronger since I also do have the Wukong on the board. So now that I look at this replay for like the second time in a row, maybe I should have sold Jinx and Teemo, picked up the Jax, and played the Lux also instead of the Garens. Um, that could have been pretty good and go like three Divines early. Um, I know three Divine doesn't give additional synergies, but like all the units themselves, they're all like very strong. I'd have Wukong level two, Jax level two, and like Lux is just... She's good. <laughs> Not much else to say there. Uh, we win this round, which is nice. Um, so skipping ahead a tiny bit again. Uh, into the next round, we have another Lux. We get the Vein and the Thresh. Um, so one thing to keep in mind, you always want to try to make interest here. But since it's kind of hard to do that, since we want to maybe keep everything, there's a potential to either like do a pre-level, which is level and buy XP to get to eight out of 10 XP. That way, next round, you get an extra drop chance for a forge co four cost unit. Cause uh, at level five, you get an opportunity to get a one of the epic or four cost units. And on level four, you have a 0% chance of doing it. You guys can see that over here um, for all the drop percentages. So that's something to always keep in mind, but we did find a way to make interest by selling the Garen and just playing the Thresh. We need Thresh eventually if we do use sharpshooters because Thresh and Vayne give me Dusk, and then the Thresh is good for frontline with like Sejuani and Aatrox for potential vanguards. Unfortunate that we lost here. This dude's team was really strong. He had a bunch of two-star units, and he had Cultists. Those are like all very strong early game synergies. So now we're onto the Carousel. We could pretty much go for anything since we have so many items that are unbuilt, um, but we are third pick, so let's skip ahead a tiny bit. Um, so over here, um, I think we end up taking a glove here because there's really not much available. We could go for the tier for Hand of Justice, but it's on a one cost unit. Early in the game, you generally want as much gold as possible. Um, so going for the glove there was probably, uh, it, it, you can argue for different things. If I go for Talon, I could build like Last Whisper Infinity Edge with two gloves and a bow. Um, I could have taken the belt to build a ZZ Rap portal or a Sunfire Cape. Those are also pretty good items. But I think here we did okay with the glove just because it's on a higher cost unit and we could even potentially play this Aurelia because we get Divine and she like, I might build a Thieves Glove on her eventually if I go for the Enlightened build. Uh, but skipping ahead, also keep in mind guys, I'm thinking about buying this Kindred. Kindred is a very strong early game unit. Um, you'll see in some of the games today if we haven't already that she can sometimes just take over the early and mid portions of the game just because she's just very strong she has high single target damage so if you're like kind of on a lose streak she can kill one or two units before you die so you take less damage or she just like one shots things and uh, allows you to win but 
we can only pick one of them up right now so we'll just leave it at that okay so on to the next round let's see what the shop is we get a cultist elise not really that useful at this point since we're not really going cultist but generally this is a very good champion to pick up early in the game so let's skip ahead a bit we end up winning this round so we get four wins one loss here uh, not the end of the world that we don't have a streak and um, we get a kindred spirit here which is very very good i'm gonna hold off on buying it yet though because i want to see if i get like perfect sharpshooter items from these golems um, i'm gonna just go sharpshooters instead but if we don't get that we'll go ahead and pick up the kindred so let's skip ahead a tiny bit we ended up getting a tier and a belt so these are not the best sharpshooter items so i just go ahead and pick up the kindred um, to go ahead and play her uh, just because like again I didn't get like any rods, I didn't get any swords, so going for sharpshooters with these items would not have been like that convincing. This makes me wonder like what direction I should go in because I can't really just jam sharpshooters right now. Um, so there are a lot of different options here. I think going like Thieves Gloves on Kindred might be fine just as like an uh, item holder. Um, I could build ZZ Rod or the Sunfire Cape like I did here. I think both are fine. It's not really like... ZZ Rod's good in this meta. Um, so it's good if there are a lot of talent players in the, in your lobbies, but Sunfire Cape is going to be a great item on Sejuani later in the game if I end up playing her, which I think I did plan on doing that in this game. Um, so skipping ahead, we win this round. See what I mean? Like Kindred, even at one star, she kills a bunch of things, but at two star, it's like obviously even easier. Okay. So here we get like the biggest shop ever. We get Ari for potentially four spirit and we get a Sejuani. I'm definitely going to pick both of those up. Going to put her in for the either the Thresh or the Wukong. I think taking out Thresh might be a little better um, because we can't make interest if we sell the Wukong. But if we were at like 47 gold, I'd probably sell the Wukong here um, and swap the item onto the Sejuani. Uh, notice how I didn't level up here. I probably should have. We are 42 gold, which means we just need to spend 12 gold on the level up. Even though we can't put anything that great, we just put in like a Sharpshooter or a Lux. Um, because we're like on a win streak and we have this spirit kindred, we should have leveled up to make sure that we win this round. Luckily, we faced someone who also didn't level up. Uh, so we just got a tiny bit lucky there because we were able to win that round. All right. So in this next shot, we get the, um, what's his name? The Aatrox. Uh, I feel like I shouldn't have sold that and found a way to play, uh, for Vanguard by playing Wukong. Sejuani, Aatrox, and Thresh, and take out Ari and Teemo and just put them on my bench. I think that would have been better here, but um, keeping four spirit in isn't the end of the world because um, Teemo's like a decent unit in the early game. Ari, she often casts in the beginning of the game because no one has high enough damage, and like obviously you want to keep Kindred in because she's my strongest unit. But I feel like four Vanguard's just like a very strong synergy in the early game, so whenever you have a chance to play it, I'd recommend to do it yourself. Um, so now onto this carousel, we have a tier and a bow available, but since we're last pick, we just have to kind of see what's available. We'd want like, oh, sorry, I skipped too far. Um, there's really nothing that great here. I think we end up taking the rod um, just because we need some sort of offensive item. We have a defensive item and we kind of have like a middle ground item. Uh, so we want something like with a bit of a punch. Also, since we got the early Ari, and we have like early vanguards. I'm thinking of going for an Ari game uh, just because we don't need to roll aggressively to hit her on stage 4 1 since we already have her. Um, so, skipping ahead here, I think we just put in the Nidalee um, to give us sharpshooters. Um, or I guess I use the Thresh. Uh, he still gets the vanguard buff. So, even though you have three vanguard, um, he still gets like the trait synergy from two vanguard. So, it's not like that bad but i feel like nidalee might have been a little better because teemo can potentially blind uh, multiple units all right so ari was able to go off here and we're able to finish him off because we have blue buff on kindred really lucky there um, if we didn't have any items on kindred we'd go for like a tier on this carousel put a blue buff on her and chosen kindred with blue buff is kind of like an unstoppable combination so just something to keep in mind in your games so we could level up here. It costs us 14 gold, but generally on 3-6, I never really level up. Unfortunately, in this match, we face someone with a full two-star team with level one Morgana, level one Talon. 
with an infinity edge so it's kind of a rough game so he ends up beating us and we lose our win streak which is gonna cost us a lot of gold we pretty much lost i think like six or seven gold from this loss um, which is obviously not, not what you want but like level two janna level one morgana level one talon really hard to beat this composition the enlightens right now uh, so moving on to the wolves nothing to buy here so we'll go ahead and skip that we just go ahead and pre-level up to level seven um, so we end up leveling up so we get a better roll on our next shop. Um, these items, they're good because we got a spell crit since we're going for Ari. And we get a great shop here with the Zillion. So we're going to go ahead and build the Jeweled Gauntlet, put another rod on Ari. Um, and then you could build a ZZ Rod. ZZ Rod's still like a good item. It's a good counter to Talon because ZZ Rod taunts units surrounding whoever has that item. So what you can do is like put the ZZ Rod on like Thresh, for example, and move him next to your carry and he'll just taunt all the assassins to him so potentially i, I could have built that right away um, but i think i hold off at this point it's also debatable picking up this morgana i could have built um what's the item called morello namicon on her um, and run her with like a lux that i already have um, i could have gone for something like that i don't think that would have been that bad either um, so if you made that decision in your game um, I think you still would have done perfectly fine. There are a lot of different options in TFT, but since I like playing the Ari comp a lot, as you guys may have seen in some of my previous videos, I kind of just wanted to tunnel on the Ari here. Um, sometimes you could get away with it, sometimes you can't. It, it all really depends. Um, so we got the second zillion here. This is like a lot of zillions. It's expensive, but like if we hit it, it's going to be really, really good, obviously. Um, I don't really feel the need to roll down here. Normally you see a lot of people roll down on 4-1 or 4-2. And the reason why they do that is because their team's really weak. But compared to everyone else, you'll notice how I'm scouting now, trying to assess the strength of everyone. Um, my team's not that weak compared to everyone else. So we could kind of wait until 4-5 to level up to level 8 potentially and roll there. Um, also, we already have a chosen unit. If we didn't have a chosen unit, we'd potentially roll. But I don't want to sell my kindred because she's going to be carrying a lot of these stage four fights. Um, so let's go skip ahead here. We did end up losing that one, which again is fine because we were at like 90 some health and stage four one. Um, so like losing these two, it's like understandable because we haven't rolled any gold. But when you're high health, you could lose your you could use your gold as a resource. We also didn't have a win streak. Um, so we lost our win streak on stage three, six. So there wasn't really too much reason for me to roll on like 4-1 or 4-2. I think here it was better just to wait and uh, get more rolls at level eight because the lo higher level you are when you roll, the higher chance of getting better units just because when you level up, you get access to better units. So we end up winning this fight here. I forgot what items we had. We have a tier and a rod. So we want another critical strike for this Ari. Um, I think we do end up getting it this game. Yeah, so we were third pick, picked up the glove there. We could have also picked up the Zillion to get level two Zillion. I wonder if that was the right play. The only issue with that is that belt is pretty useless on him. I guess I could have built a redemption on him, but I wanted to save the tier for Ari also. Um, but redemption zillion is a pretty good, pretty good item just because he either gets his ultimate off a lot or he dies and heals your whole team. Um, both scenarios are pretty good. It's kind of like a hedge on your zillion. So maybe I could have taken that instead of the spell crit on Ari. But again, since we have so many, like we have two tank items already and we have one like middle ground item, I didn't really want to get another utility item or tank item. I wanted to get two damage items. So you always want to keep a balance between um, tank and uh, offensive items. And also, since we only really have one damage threat, which is Ari, because Kindred we're going to sell eventually, uh, you really want to make sure you have two damage items on your carry um, in these types of games. Because like whenever you're running a one threat comp, if that person ever dies, you just like auto lose every round. So, um, or if they don't have enough damage items, they don't have enough, uh, your whole team doesn't do enough damage. So you'll pretty much just auto lose at that point. Um, so I probably should have leveled up to level eight on this turn. This was one of my mistakes this game, um, just to play an extra unit. I think we could have fit in potentially like four Vanguard or something like that, which may or may not have helped uh, mitigate some damage. Um, but we go full greed here, which, like, again, like, I would have been at 40 gold if I leveled up in the previous round. So it's like, I obviously should have done it, but it's not the end of the world because we are not in trying to play, or we don't need to play perfectly to win games at, like, lower elos, you know? Um, so there is, like, a lot of breathing room. So if you ever feel, like, super unlucky in your games, just know that, like, 
Your opponents are probably going to make a ton of mistakes, so as long as you, as you make fewer mistakes in them, you're probably going to climb in the long term. All right, decent win here. So we went 2 and 3 on stage 4 despite not rolling at all. So that's a very, very, very good outcome. Um, but again, because our team was strong in stage 3 because we picked up the Kindred Chosen, uh, that's why we were so strong. A lot of people in stage 4-1, they sell their Chosen and roll down in hopes of getting like a 4-cost Chosen. You can do that some games, but you can't do that every game. Uh, so just try to keep in mind which games are good to do that in, which games are not good to do that in. If you're low health and desperate or you have a 1-cost Chosen unit, yeah, you could go ahead and do that. But Kindred, pretty safe to not to not uh, have to do like a desperation roll. Also, we were very high health, and that's why uh, we decided not to roll because we have a ton more gold now compared to what we would have had before. Um, and we went from like 90 health, I think, to 62 health, so it's not the end of the world, but now we're going to get a bigger power spike than everyone else who rolled at stage 4-1. So I'm going to roll down a bit, try to pick up some legendaries, get a good chosen unit. You could pick up the Riven and maybe like call it a day after that, but we don't really have the best like Riven items or like units to support the Riven, so I ended up skipping that. I went ahead, picked up the Sejuani carry. Um, I plan to roll down probably to like 20 here, um, or until I get Sejuani 2 and Ari 2. And I think selling that Kane may have been a mistake. I could put blue buff on Kane, um, and he could potentially carry that way, or I could put the Thieves Glove on Kane. I wonder if I should have done that and tried to start like building him up, just because I have a lot of uh, legendary units. I have two zillions and two azirs at this point, so I could potentially keep that cane rolled to zero and try to complete at least one of the legendary pairs that I have, or even get like a level two cane. So that was one option available, but at some point you want to stop rolling to potentially hit level nine. Um, so we got the four vanguard here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and skip ahead now because most of the decisions in the game have already been made for us already. Um, most of the most of TFT is actually the early game. It's not even really stage four that's important. It's mainly like stage one and stage two because it essentially sets up your entire game plan. And after that, you're just like doing what you plan to do all along in most cases. Um, this Talon's really annoying. Um, we didn't position the ZZ Rot correctly, so he ended up beating us here. But as long as we position correctly in the future, it should be fine. We need to maybe back up the Aatrox a tiny bit, because I think Talon jumped and killed something really quickly. Um, so he taunts in like a radius around him, so if the Talon's too far away, he doesn't actually get the taunt off. So skipping ahead here, we don't want to sell off any of our legendaries to get to 50 gold, because like we need those units. So whenever you need a unit, try not to sell it, even if it makes you miss interest. Uh, a mistake I see a lot of people doing, they sell like their whole bench in order to make an interest threshold, and like... You don't need to do that all the time. Sometimes you'd rather like keep a pair, even if it's a legendary unit that you have like a low chance of completing. Um, so here we have full Ari items already. So we're probably looking for a Sejuani item or a tank item or like a mana item for Zillion. We don't have any mana items here, so it's probably a tank item. Stone plate probably would have been the best. Uh, Thornmail is pretty good. The Shroud of Stillness over here would have been great too. Um, but yeah, we go ahead and grab the Thornmail for Sejuani. It's potentially Vanguard Spatula as well. I think that actually might have been better now that I look at it because then we don't have to run this Hecarim. So actually, yeah, it was definitely going for Vanguard Spatula instead of uh, Bramble Vest. But Bramble Vest is still a good item because there are a lot of talons, so it just makes your this unit pretty much unkillable. But perhaps I should have built it on Aatrox and backlined the Aatrox so that talon um, actually attacks the, the Bramble Vest. So some things to keep in mind there. Uh, let's go ahead and skip ahead. My uh, ZZ Rod shouldn't have been on my Aatrox. I should have put it either on uh, my Sejuani or like my Thresh, who's always next to my Ari. Um, so in this fight here, I think we end up winning this one. This guy's not that strong, and Ari just cleans people up. Also, we have like a very strong front line, so he couldn't really break through that either. Uh, let's go ahead and skip ahead. You could pick up this Cassiopeia. It gives us Dusk, but... It's not like, it's a good unit because it gives us Mystic if we want to replace Yumi. Um, but it's not like that that great. I think I wanted to hit level 9 and try to get a uh, 2 star Legendary chosen instead. So I just decided to wait until then to, to roll down. 
All right, let's skip ahead through this fight. I think we do end up winning this one. Ari did get a good ult there. And I think we got like a lot of zillion ults that maybe negated some of talent stuff. Oh no, we actually did lose there. Um, that kind of sucks. Uh, it happens. All right, so we got a Ionic Spark here. Not the best item, obviously, but it is like okay because we have extra room on Sejuani. I'd much prefer an item for like Zillion uh, or like a support item like Zephyr or Shroud of Stillness, but I Ionic Spark is still decent. It's just not that great in the late game. Let's go ahead, skip ahead. Um, I'm actually not going to pick up this Morgana for the same reason I said before. I want to hit level 9 and just roll down to 0 and hit like a chosen legendary unit. And I'm going to wait one more turn for that because I'm at 38 lives. So I probably have like 3 lives here. So I could afford to lose 1 game right now and still have 2 lives to win the lobby with. Because um, I'll get like a ton more rolls if I just wait one more turn. Because if I level up now, I'll have like 0 gold. So I can't even get enough gold to like find a chosen legendary if I leveled up at that point. Uh, so just keep in mind whenever you go on nine, unless you have a unit to put in right away, um, if you need to roll, make sure you have at least like 10 to 20 gold to do that. And like, since I'm looking for Azir, I'm looking for Zillion, that's 10 gold right there. And I want a chosen legendary, which costs 15 gold. So that's like 25 gold that I need to spend to like buy my shop. Um, so again, just something to keep in mind whenever you're deciding to level up to level nine. Uh, we end up hitting the Zillion, which is huge. I think we pick up this Azir, also huge. So those are two very, very big upgrades for us. I want to drop this Hecarim somehow. I need to scout the lobby to see whether I need four Mystic or four Vanguard. Um, I think we're facing two Talon players. So even though Talon does physical damage, a lot of these teams run Morgana, which does magic damage. This guy's a Yone who does magic damage also. Um, so it's perfectly fine to drop four Vanguards because he doesn't typically attack tanks anyways. Um, you kind of he'll he'll attack like one tank, but he won't attack like two different tanks, uh, if what I said made made sense. Uh, I think we do end up winning this one, or no, we do not. Uh, maybe this Azir does it. Oh, Azir kind of did a sidestep there. I have no idea how he did that. Do we win this one? No way, right? This Morgana does too much. Uh, unfortunate. So we lost a lot of life there. Not not the best scenario. So there are two people left or three people left. So whenever you're in this scenario, your opponent is random. So yeah, you need to be prepared to face both of them. Um, a lot of times when there are more people in the game, you only face a person who you haven't faced in the last round, or you can't face the person you face in the last round. But when it's three people left, it's a 50-50 every time. We had two Talon players. I'm going to go ahead and put in the Shen for four Mystic, because again, Hecarim, kind of a weak unit. That's why I should have got Vanguard Spatula before. Um, so that's like a, a mistake that we made. I like the position we had here. We put the Thresh in front of the, the Ari, which just pretty much protects our Ari uh, against his talent. So just something to keep in mind. Try to surround your carry because um, you need to protect them against the, the talents. Decent ultimate there. Great items on Azir. Shojin's one of his best items, in my opinion. Uh, do we end up losing this one? I think we do. This Talon's still up, so and we have no damage. The one downside of Azir, he's like one of the best legendaries in the game, but he just does no damage, so uh, you can kind of get a little uh, unlucky with that. I think Chalice of Power is great here because we're full items on everyone else. Uh, so we just need a support item. I could have went Guardian Angel and put that on maybe Zillion. That could have helped also. Uh, ZZ Rot, second ZZ Rot may have been good too if I put it on like Thresh. But uh, you can't complain about a Chalice of Power on Ari because when Ari has a spell crit, Chalice of Power, the multiplier from like the critical strike is just really, really big. Um, a lot of people have done the math on this and... Uh, you just want as much spell power as you can on Ari whenever you have this item combination. So here I'm deciding what to drop to fit in this Yone. I think I end up selling the Thresh because then I get the two Adepts, which like isn't too bad. Two Adept isn't the strongest thing in the world, but it's not like that terrible. I move the ZZ Rot in front of my Ari, and then I put the Chalice of Power next to my Ari also. I, I would try to swap the Azir over here so he gets a Chalice too, but it's not the end of the world. Like... AP on Azir doesn't really do that much because he just doesn't really do damage. So notice how even though the Talon was right next to my Ari, he was attacking the 
Aatrox because of ZZ Rot. Um, and that's just like the power of the counter item to Talon. So if you guys are facing a lot of Talons, build a ZZ Rot portal. And the way he had that range was because he has Rapid Fire Cannons. Rapid Fire Cannon gives a bunch of range. And so somehow we beat this guy and the other guy lost too. So another easy, easy win there. This game was around like gold elo. So next game we're going to go into platinum and the next we'll go into some diamond games. All right. I know it says silver here, but we're in like silver one and we face like gold players. So it's kind of like the same thing. But all right, let's go into the next video now. All right, now we're on to the, I think this is the fourth game. We are now in Platinum. Uh, we're on my friend's account right now, so I'm coaching my friend here. Um, he's a master player, but like he has a Plat account, so I was like, hey, can we play a game in Platinum? Um, I told him to not pick anything on the carousel, but he like, he didn't, like he didn't hear me or like comprehend it. So he ends up getting an armor here. Um, but a lot of people in, in Platinum, they don't like armor. So I guess it's like, it could have been one of the one of the options left over. Obviously, everyone wants sword in this current patch, um, but we end up getting the armor here. I like armor. I just don't want to get a cloak or a belt. But like even those, it's not the end of the world. We end up getting a glove here. He loves glove. I love glove too. Um, but it's not really good with a chain vest because we can't build an item yet. Um, so it's kind of tough to say, or. It's not like a good combination quite yet, even though the two items individually are very good to start with. Um, so here, I would have picked up the two vanguards, but um, I think we were kind of asleep on this round. Uh, but yeah, you want to sell this Nami because you never really want a chain vest on Nami. Um, so we'll go ahead and skip, a get, skip ahead. We were kind of like, I think we were both like eating while we were playing this game. Um, which is why I'm doing the voiceover, but um, end up getting the Garen here, so we get two Vanguard. Yumi and Lux, very good units. Yumi's very, very strong early because she, like, it's hard to kill Yumi early game, so she just ends up healing your entire team, and it's very, very effective. Um, so I pick up Garen here and play the three units, but again, I think we were asleep again. What what did he end up buying? He bought the Nami. Um, Add. I don't know why he did that, but uh, I would have picked up the two Garens there, but let's go ahead and skip, skip ahead. We got the gold here, so we have the Akali and the Lux, and he was too slow to sell everything to get to 10 gold. Uh, we could watch that in an instant replay. Um, yeah, we just missed it right there. So we were at 9 gold when the round started, but obviously, like, in your game, sell everything, you'd have 14 gold here. Um, so some mistakes happen, you know, but that doesn't mean you lose the game because of it. So here I'd put in Nidalee over the Nami, um, just because we need some damage. Nami doesn't really do any damage. Um, I forgot if he ends up doing that here. Yeah, he, we do do that. Uh, and again, we can't build an item because we have armor and glove, so that that doesn't actually build anything. Um, he's keeping the Namis because he likes playing. We're on his like Smurf account, so he kind of wanted to have some fun. He likes playing the Nami double Ludens build, which like isn't really that great. Um, so here I would sell the two Namis, pick up Elise and Maokai. He also likes using Nami as an enlightened transition. Um, but again, I'm not really the biggest fan of that. So this Fiora, it's okay. You could play it. I don't think it's like the strongest thing you can do. Um, for me, I just play for a loose streak here, pick up the Hecarim and just kind of go from there. Like, I think we were pausing here because we were kind of like debating which uh, which team might be better here. Obviously, like this board is stronger, um, but I think like the Duelist Fiora doesn't do anything for us in the long term. I think we could get it a better chosen than that. And like when we're not building any items, we're not going to be winning any games. So the argument of like, oh, wait, like maybe we could win some games by taking an early chosen. I don't really think that applies because again, we, uh, we don't have any items, so it's going to be hard to win. And we didn't level up. So yeah, I think I definitely wanted to pick up the Hecarim here, but um, we went for the Vi. Not too big of a difference there, honestly. Um, but let's go ahead, skip ahead. Um, we end up getting the two-star Garen, which is huge. Um, oh, we did pick up the Hecarim. Okay, that's nice. I think we sell the Fiora here because it is garbage, and we're just going for playing for a lose streak here. Oh yeah, I remember what happened. He wanted to go ahead and play Warlords. I didn't really like this because we're on a lose streak. Warlords are only good if you're really win streaking. Um, but just because like I say something and he says something else doesn't mean it's like one's necessarily that wrong. It just depends on your play style. Because again, he is like a master player, um, so it's not like he has trouble winning in platinum. You know. Um, 
So like you could do a lot of different things. Just make sure that whatever you're doing, you're comfortable with, um, because that's ultimately going to be the biggest, uh, biggest factor. Uh, so if we win here, we'll uh, keep the Nami. If we don't, we'll just sell it. Looks like we are losing this one because he has the Diana. Yeah. So on this carousel, you could pretty much go for anything here. It's actually a really tough carousel because our items are so versatile. Um, so whenever this happens, you kind of want to pick up a good unit. Um, so I'm thinking here, maybe we get for the, the Kindred just to kind of play it. And yeah, that's what we end up doing here. So skipping ahead a tiny bit, uh, we could IE the Kindred. It's a pretty good thing to do. I think he wanted to go for the Akali with IE. That's also a strong combination. Um, we could even potentially level up and try to like stop the lose streak. Or I think the best play might have been to sell the Nidalee and the Vi and go ahead and play Akali and Kindred. I think that's what we end up doing here. Here, let me see if we end up doing that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we... Oh, no, we didn't. Hmm, that's weird. Sometimes you could do this to make 30 gold by selling the Vi. I think I would have picked up the Akali to try to preserve my health. We uh, we also have like two different play styles. Like I'm more of like a flexible player, whereas he kind of likes having specific items for specific builds. Um, so he didn't like slam Infinity Edge and um, he wanted the interest over going for the Akali. Um, again, two very different plays, but I think both of them still work. Because um, again, like we're both like decent players um, and we both can win in this level but like he loves streaking and streaking is important but i felt like if we picked up the akali we could have like started a win streak and uh just lose a lose streak over here which um lose streaking is really good don't get me wrong but i just thought that this game we could like reverse it a little earlier than we um than we ended up doing uh so we face this guy unfortunately i think we are stronger than this person just because he only has a nami with luden so and we have a Kindred, and Kindred sometimes just wins games um, on her own. And yeah, so unlucky. We lost a lose streak. Really, really terrible. Sometimes you can't really control these things. Um, but again, that's why, like, just because a play didn't work out doesn't mean it's bad. Because if he did get a lose streak here, he'd look like a genius. And his team was pretty weak, but other teams were just, just happened to be weaker. Um, I'd say that's just unlucky. Uh, so here we are thinking about going sharpshooters a tiny bit. So I think we pick up the Thresh and the Vein. Um, we picked up one Thresh already, and if we got a bunch more gold, we would have picked up the Thresh and the Vein. I think we sell the Hecarim for the other Thresh here, um, or you just buy everything. We should also level up. Um, yeah, and we did that right there. Uh, let's see what items we get. Negatron and a Sword. So we have two Swords. So we're thinking Talon game at this point, because the more Swords you have, the stronger Talon is. So we definitely need to build an item here, um, probably the Infinity Edge. So I'm going to skip ahead a tiny bit here. I think here we want to either play, if we got four Vanguard, we'd play that. But I think we want to pick up the Yumi here for Spirit and Mystic over the Nidalee. Um, but I think we were, we like just didn't even see the Yumi at this point in time. Um, but that's a much better board that we could have played. I think we end up pick, uh, like realizing it later and buying it like right now. Yeah. <laughs> again, like we're both like eating because again, we're in like on a Smurf account. We're not like super tryharding, but like even though we're doing that, these games are still like super, super easy for us just because um, we have good principles and like we have the basics of the game down. So as long as you have or take the time to learn like those types of basic things, you'll be able to do fine in just about any rating even if you're not like fully focused um but again like that yumi there is obviously a ton better yumi is a strong early game unit and she gives us both spirit and mystic so you you definitely want to try to not let that decision like mess you up in your games um you'll notice that we also leveled up to level six so whenever you have like excess gold go ahead and put that into your level up because we typically don't roll on stage three um it's like very rare that you do um so yeah we just put that into our level up go up to level six and have like a stronger team after that and luckily we were able to sneak out that win there which is really helpful uh so here we have two teamos uh we don't really have sharpshooter items since we have an infinity edge and we're pretty much like dead set on talon here because like he likes forcing compositions a lot and whenever he gets two swords he's always thinking about talon 
Talon's also very strong on this patch, so there's really nothing wrong with that thought process. Um, because we have like Guardian Angel, Infinity Edge, and yeah, those are like two of the one of the best items on on Talon. It's just it's just a matter of hitting the unit, which we uh, we have no control over. End up winning that round there. So again, we had a sword, a armor, and a Negatron. Um, but we're kind of like third pick, so we don't have the best options. That Ash would have been the best thing to get because we'd build Quicksilver Sash on her. We have the Infinity Edge, and then we have another sword item for her. So that by far would have been the best item. But um, And then we just like probably play Ash. Um, but I think here we end up going for the Rod um, because we want to start building the Morgana items. And the reason behind that is because we already have two and a half Talon items potentially four components for Talon and we have zero for Morgana. So you kind of want to spread the love a little bit um, whenever you're building your items. So nothing much to do here. We could think about leveling up uh, just because it costs 20 gold to level up and we're at 62 right now. Um, and we're on a win streak, so I do think we end up doing that. Um, our team's also like going to get much stronger with this because we could um, just like add a random extra unit. We don't have like the best thing to put in, but it's still better than like nothing, you know? Um, let's go ahead and skip ahead for this fight. Oh, we faced someone like super strong here. He's got the chosen Shade Zed with like Cultus. So it's it's really it's really tough winning these games. So we got like kind of unlucky twice, I'd say. We lost the lose streak on two six, and then we lost the win streak on stage three. So a little a little unlucky in that sense. Like the guy we faced just happened to be really strong. Chosen Shade Zed is probably one of the strongest chosens in the early game. Uh, but let's go ahead and skip ahead. We got super lucky here. Let's like watch this in an instant replay uh, because we just ended up getting Chosen Hunter Ash because we are level seven. Uh, level seven. That's the first level where you have a chance of getting um, four star chosen. So we just go ahead and end up playing that. Uh, sell the Kindred, buy the new Kindred, put all the items on Ash, uh, save the Negatron for a Quicksilver Sash, and just like pretty much AFK for the rest of, ga rest of the game here. Uh, notice how we don't have the Brawler start. Normal normally when you play Ash, you generally like having a lot of Brawlers, but you could play them with any front line or play like a bunch of Hunters instead. I've seen like five Hunter work really, really well on this particular patch. So you just kind of have to know like what Ash builds are the best. Um, and what's like playable so like we could do like ash vanguards it's not the end of the world people think you can only play it in brawlers but those people are just wrong so not much else to say there uh let's skip ahead we get a warwick here so again like it's exactly what we want we want more hunters so we have four hunter right now uh, let's go ahead and skip ahead we want to sell our bench here i'll i'll show this again we want to sell our bench to get up to 50 gold. Um, so we just sell off the units that we don't care about. We'll keep the Kench because we want to try to get back into Brawlers in like a ideal scenario, but that doesn't always happen. And the Nidalee and the Pike were useless to us because we're not going Talon anymore uh, since we have the Chosen Ash. Uh, so here it kind of gets a little tricky. We have a lot of Rod items. Not really the best thing for Ash. We got none of the complementary items or the Negatron cloak that we had or the sword that we had. So we could have had something like Giant Slayer, Deathblade, or like Quicksilver Sash. But um, I'd say that's kind of unlucky. But we do get like Elderwood Spatula. We could easily go six Elderwood this way. Um, so it's not like the end of the world there. Uh, here you could consider putting Hat on Kindred. We end up doing that just because um, we're going to eventually transfer that to set. It's not like the best item on set, but it's like very good. You just want as much ability power on set as you can. Jeweled gauntlet, obviously going to be better, but we can't, we can't choose our items every time. Oh, one thing to keep in mind on this patch, always pick up Shen's because everyone is going for Shen. So when you pick him up, you kind of like deny him from other teams. So this shop, nothing much to do here. Again, we're not rolling on 4-1 or 4-2 because we're super strong. The only guy was that's stronger than us was that like chosen talent guy. So it's like, even though we got lucky, other people this game got lucky also. So it's like, um, there's kind of like a balance. And like in the end, after you play like 50 games or like 100 games of TFT, like the luck kind of even evens out. 
So we face him now. Let's see like who actually wins. He also has Morgana two star. So this guy is super, super strong. He did pay for it. He paid 40 gold to get there. But hey, if I rolled down and got two stars of both my carries that are four costs, I'd do it every game uh, for 40 gold. He also has two Nikos on his bench. This guy's actually like, <laughs> it's going to be a hard game to win because like he beat us with like 10 items on his bench and two Nikos. Um, again, like someone's always going to high roll every game. You just got to like persevere and kind of push through it. So on this next shot, we got Thrushes, but I don't really think we need that there because we don't have Sejuani. So there's not like that much reason to go for um, like the four vanguards with this build. So we just go ahead, transition back into Brawlers. Uh, we could put the Elderwood Spatula on someone else. Um, unfortunately, we don't have six Elderwood yet, which is like a really, really good combination, but it's not the end of the world. We put the Elderwood Spatula on Vi. A lot of people would have put it on Warwick, but on Vi, since we're going to sell Vi eventually, we could put it on whoever we want, which potentially could be like a two-star legendary later in the game. So that's why we put it on her instead of the Warwick, which again is what I see a lot of people doing. So we're going to go ahead and pre-level there so we get an extra roll at level 8. And then we might roll down there because we're at 47 life, which is actually getting pretty low. So we are next pick here. We want to get an Ash item here. So I think we go for the crit to get... Um, oh, we missed it. Um, to go for a Quicksilver Sash. Another option is Bow. So we end up taking the Bow. Bow builds a Giant Slayer. Um, Quicksilver Sash is really, really necessary i'd say on ash it's like one of our best items just because people are playing dazzler people are playing adepts um, but i'll talk about it later because we're doing a roll down right now uh, we need to find the six elderwood and we found that there it's a big power spike and uh, we potentially would have rolled down to like 20 because we're actually really low right now you'll see that the lobby split into two groups so the people above 70 and the people below like 50 essentially we're in the below 50 group which isn't good so like whenever you see like a dichotomy like that it's like or if you're just low in general like if we're you're below 50 health in stage four you need to start thinking about like not greeting to get a perfect team and just spending your gold now in order to stay alive i am losing my voice doing this um let's go ahead skip ahead nothing to buy here Nothing much to change about our team. We're just going to wait till 5-1 to probably roll down all our gold um, and just try to top four from here. Because like everyone we're facing, like look at this. Nunu, three-star. Ash, very good items. He's got three items on Ash. It's like, it's really rough winning these games. Like this isn't even including the Talon Morgana two-star guy. And it's just like... <laughs> It's really rough. So even with like a chosen Ash, like it's not like a free win. You have to still play the game in order to top four. But let's go ahead, skip ahead here. We went for Lulu over the Vagar because Lulu is just a better unit. Um, we get like decent items here. I think we end up building, I think Deathblade on Ash, or maybe we built a Giant Slayer because there's a lot of brawlers. Now we end up with the death blade. That's that's perfectly okay. Uh, and then I think we wanted to build the Titans Resolve on the set if we end up getting it, and then the Gargoyle Stone Plate on one of our tanks. We end up getting Ezreal there. That was a misclick. We put it in for Lulu, and our team is a lot stronger now. go ahead skip ahead yeah we build we end up building the titans and gargoyle stone plate on the hecarim there um, we win these fights here our team's pretty strong now getting the ezreal is pretty big ezreal is like one of the critical units later in the game we just sell the rest of our bench we potentially <coughs> sorry about that uh, we potentially could go like nine elderwood if we get like more spatulas or something like that um, but it's kind of far-fetched so try not to go for any of the like nine person synergies especially if you don't have the chosen for it um, azir is a good legendary to hold on to we could replace some of these units and go down to like three elderwood and just play random legendaries which i think was our plan here um, but let's go ahead 
skip through to the next fight because we don't have a decision to make there. We end up winning this fight. And all right, so here on this next turn, like there's no point going for Hecarim three star. We're level eight, so not that high of a chance to get the Hecarim three star, even though we have very good items for him. I'd rather just go level nine, but like since it's not costing us any interest, we might as well just buy it just in case we get like extremely lucky. We face a nine cultist Galio here. Um, we do have a giant slayer, but I don't think it's enough because he's got two star zillion. Uh, it had, yeah, it's not enough, right? Oh, it actually was. Wow. I am very surprised by that. Um, Zillion, two star, he's probably the most versatile legendary, so he can be played in pretty much every team. Uh, same with Yone, he could also pretty much be played in any team, and they are like some of the highest win rate legendaries if you like look at all the stats. So this is actually a very hard carousel, lots of good items. We end up going for the Hand of Justice there, but I think getting a ZZ Rot portal is also really good because there are two Talon players. So again, we talked about this in our last game, Counter to Talon, ZZ Rot portal. Um, but like Hand of Justice, it's going to be great on set if we end up getting him, or like any of the other like random legendary units. So we're 41 health now. We go ahead and level up. Uh, just because the game's kind of tight, and like if we sack two more rounds, we'd be at like 20 or 10 life, and that's not a good point to be at. So we just go ahead, level up, try to get better rolls, and go from there. Uh, I think we should have rolled to 10 there. Uh, instead of staying at 20. It's kind of like, it's a tough call, but I think you wanted to roll at least once or twice there to try to get something better to put in. We're still running like Hecarim, which isn't ideal in like an Elderwood composition. But yeah, we lose here. We lose a ton of life there actually. Um, so let's go ahead, skip ahead here. Um, nothing to pick up in this shop. So we just go to 30 gold. Uh, so let's skip ahead some more. Uh, this game, I think we end up winning this one. No, we don't. We got Smash. I thought Ash made a comeback there, but all right. Now this game's looking really, really rough. We are at eight life now, and yeah, the 76 health guy is like is a guy who hit everything. They're like two super, super strong people. Um, is this guy running nine Warlords? I didn't quite see. Uh, we get the Azir. We get the Kane. Um, you always want to play Kane on the neutral rounds because he gets a free stack of his... Uh, what's what's his trait called? I think it's called Tormented, where you get like an upgrade after he plays for three rounds. So you always want to put him in in the neutral rounds in order to get like a free turn of uh, of Kane. And these items we got, they're really good. Unfortunately, we can't put them on Ash, but like the Bramble Vest, obviously good on Kane. Uh, but we go ahead and roll down here. We get the here. I'll, I'll I won't skip through the roll down so you guys can see what we pick up. Um, Nico's going to be really good. That's going to help us complete like one of our legendaries, but we get the Azir there, which is huge. Azir is probably one of the most, like, he's another one of those like legendaries that are playable in any comp. Uh, and I'm getting, I think the, oh, we pass on Zillion. We got this Kane, which is obviously what we want. Um, and then we go ahead and sell the Kindred because Kindred had great items for Kane. And then we play the set over the Hecarim. And then we just, um, yeah, take out the Vi to keep the six Elderwood. I think we Elderwood spatted the, we should have done it on set, but we ended up putting it on the Kane, not the end of the world. I think Quicksilver Sash would have would have been better on Kane. Um, but we QSS the Ezreal, Rune on the Ezreal, and Stone played, I think, just like a random unit. Um, we didn't have like the luxury of like choosing the perfect unit because we ran out of time because we're eight life. We also should have Nikoed the Ezreal, but we had like 50 things to do that turn. So it's kind of, uh, what do you say, like a little like unfortunate that like we were slow on kind of clicking all our buttons and it's like TFT, like mechanics don't really matter, but like they're very rare instances like the one we just had where they really do because uh, we missed Nico on our Ezreal, which would have made the game a ton easier. Luckily, like since we won that round, we potentially could get both Ezreal and set with this Nico, but Unfortunately, we hit like every other legendary other than like Set and Ezreal. So that didn't really end up happening. So we have to Nico this Ezreal here because we are eight life. And level two Ezreal, probably one of the strongest units in like this meta because Dazzlers are really good. We don't actually have Dazzler right now, but he's still a good unit because he heals your whole team and he 
uh, gives your whole team an attack speed buff. He debuffs the enemy team, making them have slower attack speed, and he also damages them. So if he ever gets like decent items, he's gonna like carry a lot of your games, but not as like a main carry, but more of like a support carry. But since we have like a ton of items on set, two star cane with like very good items, it's like this game's looking pretty good for us right now, even though we're at eight life. So notice how we made the mistake before of not playing Kane in the neutral round. We would have had upgraded Kane here, but instead we have to wait an extra turn before we get it, which since we're at eight life, it actually could have costed us the game. So even if you win a game, there are always mistakes to look out for. So you just got to figure out what it is. Uh, one thing I like to do with Azir soldiers late game positioning wise I like putting one of them in the center back because a lot of people put their assassins in the middle and if they do that they're gonna end up attacking the soldiers which is exactly what you want. Other good positions for it is like in the front line because they'll always get hit there so it just depends on what team you're facing. So on this carousel we want an Ezreal item because he has an open item slot. I think blue buff would be the best for that. Deathblade's also really good because we have Runon's Hurricane on him. Uh, what do we end up taking here? End up taking sort of the Divine. Uh, Divine on Ezreal is okay because we do have the Warwick, but I think Deathblade would have been much better here, looking back at it. Um, I think we forgot that we had Runons on the Ezreal during our actual actual game. But yeah, it's still like, it's still decent, you know, but it's just not as good as having like a Deathblade with a Runons. So here, I don't really know which cane is better, red cane or blue cane. It depends what you roll on Hand of Justice, you know? If, like, you always want, like, both healing and tons of damage. Um, but I think I just told him, put whatever one you have on there, because we were running low on time. Um, we ended up going for red cane, which is good with Elderwood spatula. So, like, Elderwood makes him super tanky. So when you're super tanky, you want to lifesteal a ton, because you'll just be, like, an unkillable tank. Uh, he got Zephyr this round, unfortunately, but as you can see, like, he still does a ton of damage because he has Rabinon's death cap, and, like, he's pretty much unkillable now, though. And we also have this giant set, so at this point in the game, because we didn't roll in stage 4, we were able to go to level 9, and we have, like, 4 legendaries upgraded to 2-star because of that, so it's one of those games where you have to recognize where you are, like, kind of getting, like, a good start and playing around that. Uh, cause a lot of people, they just automatically roll down on stage four and that's not always going to be the best play. Uh, this guy's really strong. Yone two stars, uh, Talon with three items. The only weak part about his team is this Morgana, but he has 57 life. So it's kind of rough. This was one of those, um, I think this was one of the guys who was like really strong in the mid game, unless I'm thinking about something else, someone else. Um, not that he was weak, but like maybe someone else was stronger. Again, I wanted to put the soldier in the bottom, but like I wanted the soldier next to the Aurelia so he doesn't disarm our entire team. Look at that. She only disarmed the soldier. So that's why we ended up, ended up putting the soldier up there. There are always like little positioning things that you could improve on every game. And like you, it's impossible to pick up every single detail, like while playing the game so it's always good to look back on your games figure out what's happening in the fight and try to uh, manage your or like remember things and like next time you're in those similar scenarios hopefully you remember we get gargoyle stone plate not the best item because we don't really have an item holder so we're just going to put it on a random tank i think we actually ended up putting it on azir just in case he like gets attacked by Talon or something like that, but it's like, it's kind of a useless item. Warwick might be the best holder of it. Um, we're just rolling our gold, trying to get like random legendaries or like two star Nunu. Doesn't end up happening. We could have waited, um, but it's like this gold rolling down at this point in the game doesn't really matter at all because we already have like all the upgrades for our team. He did get the Morgana too, so he did get slightly stronger. He also moved his Aurelia so that it didn't hit the soldier. So uh, we probably should have scouted instead of like rolling down. Late, late in the game, like rolling is often a bait. You always want to be like 
checking other people's positioning and uh, trying to play around that because that's going to end up being the most important thing in your or uh, it's going to be the thing that affects your chances of winning the game the most luckily we have this set which is like with the bramble vest and the titans resolve uh he's not gonna die to talon you know um, but the titans resolve gives him gives him enough damage to actually like kill his team through the janna shield so it's kind of like a good combination there all right so skipping ahead we're again looking out for things to position around so i'll go back a little bit um and tell you like some things to look out for um, personally, if we were to roll down here, I'd replace the, um, I think the Maokai and the Lulu try to drop down to like three or four Elderwood, just because you don't really care about six Elderwood if you're going for like two star legendary units. But um, yeah, just that's like a small team upgrade, I guess. Uh, again, th that front soldier ended up doing a ton of work. It tanked like a Yone ult, which is again, exactly what you want. Um, but it doesn't really matter because our set is just like too tanky. Even if our whole team died, it really would not have mattered. And the guy says, stupid legendary. <laughs> um, yeah, but we were able to do that because when we were win streaking, we ended up getting our team all the way up to level eight really quickly and then level nine really quickly after that. And that was all due to not rolling on stage four when our team was already pretty strong. Um, but yeah, that's it for the plat game. Let's get into some diamond games now. All right, guys, let's hop into the next game. This one's at diamond now and uh, gets, a, gets a little tougher here, you know. I, I, I know you guys just want to reach diamond, some, but some people want to go above and beyond that. And if you guys learn how to play in diamond instead of just like playing in platinum to get to diamond, you'll learn just like even a little bit more. So here I stopped like purposely losing the carousels. I go ahead and grab the tier. Um, tier is a pretty good item right now. Again, you could check all this on the meta snapshot. Um, but without further ado, let's get into the game. Let me go ahead said and skip ahead in the first couple of rounds. Um, and I think we're going to do two diamond games because just because there's a lot of uh, learning opportunities there. Um, I'm going to do this game and then going to do another game after that. So sit tight because um, I know this is one that like a lot of people kind of quit after they hit diamond. So. It's kind of like the end goal for a lot of people. So I'll do two games here um, and we'll just see what happens there. So first round, pick up the sharpshooters. I love sharpshooters. If you are comfortable with the composition, go ahead and try to play them as much as possible. Wukong would have been fine and maybe you could have done duelists. I know a lot of people are duelist players, but I've just never played duelists um, at any sort of uh, consistent rate before. So that's why I decide not to pick them up just because I don't play them. If you want to play them, you can go ahead and learn how to. Um, I'll probably like make a guide on them sometime later in the future. But right now I don't really play them just because I don't really like the play style. Uh, just because it revolves around like going for Yasuo and I don't think he's like that great of a carry. Um, but now we pick up, we ended up picking up the Wukong. All the stuff here, you could go for like Elise Twisted Fate. It's not bad. Um, that way you could go for the Cultist Start, but um, Vanguard Start, Cultist Start. I have the two Sharpshooters already. I have lock it already for the sharpshooters and i have a tier for chalice of power later so that's why i go for sharpshooters instead of the cultists but we have enough gold to pick them up anyways um so here i'm thinking we're not gonna be able to win streak because we don't have any upgrades um so we're just gonna kind of like sit around and wait the first round i do think i end up building the locket here um just because locket's such a versatile item in the start of the game but I think I do end up building it here. Let's go ahead and skip ahead. Here, let me turn the volume back up. I think there's volume this game. Um, yeah, we end, we end up building it here, putting it on a, the Akali. This is like a pretty good start because like Akali is a great item holder for both of these. Um, just because she is just a pretty solid early game unit and she like can use pretty much any item for your entire team in the early game. End up losing here, a little unfortunate because we did slam an item, didn't end up winning, but again, we didn't level up, we didn't expect to win. Um, we're just trying to build it to preserve our health. Unfortunately, this Tom Kench lives with like one health, unlucky. Um, but here it's something kind of interesting. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, if we go back a bit, we did pick up two Dianas before. That's cause like I was planning on running assassins with Akali. 
But we get the Moonlight Diana now, or sorry, the Chosen Assassin Diana, and we get two more Dianas. Here I'm thinking, let's maybe do a Diana game. Uh, just because, well, like, there's also a Lissandra in my shop. It's hard to go for Moonlights if you need to get three three stars, but because we have so many Dianas, I can't pass up on this. You also don't want to build lockets whenever you go Diana, but uh, lockets should preserve our health enough for us to get like three proper items for Diana. Ideally, you want to save the armors for like uh, Bramble Vest, Titan's Resolve. Those are all really good items on Diana. Um, the rod could have been used for like a Hextech Gunblade if you like that build. Um, but you could build a lot of different things on Diana. One of the common misconceptions around Diana is that you need like three specific items and she doesn't work unless she has those three items. Typically, people think that is Hextech Gunblade. Bramble Vest and Dragon Claw, but that's just completely wrong. You could use all sorts of items on her. You could go like Infinity Edge, Hand of Justice, like full damage Diana. You could do a mix of everything. Um, they just need to be solid items, honestly. Uh, so we end up getting the Silas there. So we get Moonlights and the like extra Akali just because she's a strong unit. Um, I think running the extra Diana might be slightly better, but I'm not actually 100% sure. Um, but we could go ahead and skip ahead. There's not much else to think of in the shop here. So this should be like one of the quicker games that we see today because like we're just doing hyper roll. So the early game's pretty um, decided for us already. Notice how like I put the locket on the Lissandra. I want it on her because she makes better use of the ability power over the Silas. And even though she's a one star unit right now, she's going to get the two star bonus because of Moonlight, so whenever you put an item on a Moonlight unit, they go ahead and get prioritized for the level up, so you still get like the two-star shielding from the Lissandra because you put the item on her. All right, let's skip ahead. I think I want a crit here for the Diana, um, just because Hand of Justice is really, really strong on her. We end up getting that, so that's really good, so we'll go ahead and skip ahead again. Uh, you don't need Gunblade. You could go like Hand of Justice, Double Hand of Justice. Um, that pretty much gives her the same amount of healing. Uh, but we'll just go ahead and slam that item on her because it's one of the best on her. And keep in mind, since we are doing a slow roll strategy, which means rolling down to 50 gold every turn once you get up to like 60 gold. Right now we're at 20, so we're not going to do that yet. Um, you just go up to 60 gold, roll down to 50, repeat that every turn until you hit your desired units. Right now that is Diana, Lissandra, and Silas. And the reason why we do that instead of like doing like the normal level ups that we normally do is because we want three star Diana to get the moonlight. Um, to get her to four star. So a little bit of a different strategy than what we've seen in the past. So in case you guys were wondering like, how do I play hyper roll or how do I play slow roll? This is the game for you. Uh, we go ahead and win that round. Our team's like actually decently strong at this point, um, but we wanna yeah pick up all the moonlights. We see a Lissandra there, go ahead and buy that. Um, and we can also just like play something over this random extra Lissandra. Uh, it could be like a Janna, uh, but I think this other Diana is actually stronger at this point in time, just because Assassin's early game are pretty decent because um, it's easy to kill people's backline if you guess the right spot. Let's go ahead and see how we did in this fight. We ended up winning this, so we actually went three and two, which is pretty good because you don't need perfect, perfect items on Diana, as I discussed before. You just need playable items on her. So here, again, we still haven't leveled up. We're still six out of 10 XP at level four. We're not gonna touch that level up button until we get uh, level 3 Diana, and even maybe level 3 Lissandra, hopefully. So we'll go ahead and skip ahead. Uh, let's see what items we got. We got a sword, which is good because we could build Gunblade. We got crit, which is even better because we could build Infinity Edge. Um, I generally don't like building both Gunblade and Hand of Justice because it ends up being like too much healing 50% of the time. So Infinity Edge, it's going to be great. A lot of people never build this on Diana, and I'm always surprised... This allows her to kill people with both her auto attacks and her spell. Whereas all the tanky builds that I talked about before, which is Gunblade, Bramble Vest, and Dragon Claw, she only kills stuff whenever she brings her shield up. But now you'll see in this next fight that she could kill people even with her auto attacks. Um, so we see her jump over. One attack, two attack dead. One attack, two attack with the Janna shield, and then like almost killed it with a third attack. And then her spell's still going to deal a ton of damage, you know? So you're gonna you're gonna get like two sources of damage this way. It's much much stronger than what it was before. Um, so again, I don't know why people don't build Infinity Edge on her, but like I've always liked building it. 
All right, so now we are above 50 gold. We bought those two units and then uh, bought the Silas's. We go ahead and play for Assassin. We're gonna sell these three things on the right, or sorry, not on the right, on the left. Well, we wanna keep these guys. Um, we wanna sell this Elise, Yasuo, and Kennen, and then we go up up to uh, 50 gold. Um, let's skip ahead. Um, let's watch this fight again, just because it, it's so satisfying watching Diana for some reason. Um, like one attack, two attack dead, one attack. Uh, she did get stunned, so sometimes people get build Quicksilver Sash, which is pretty good on the damage build for third item. Um, I actually kind of recommend that if you do go for like full damage, get a QSS so she keeps um, the uptime on her Infinity Edge auto attacks. Uh, let's go ahead, skip ahead. Um, so now we're at 60 gold. We'll, we'll do what we talked about before, which is slow rolling, which is just rolling down, picking up all the units we want, which is like, you want like six assassins if you can with this Diana just because she'll end up doing a ton of damage because she gets a ton of critical strike from the assassin trait bonus. Um, but yeah, you just roll down to 50. I'm going to sell all the extra units to get back up there. And you just rinse and repeat that every turn. So let's go ahead and skip ahead a little bit. Um, on this carousel, we want to pick up another Diana item. We could go for like a defensive item or more offense. Um, I wanted second hand of justice, so I would have preferred getting like a crit or a tier. We don't end up getting that because we're last pick. Um, so I think we go for Negatron. Well, we didn't have a choice in this spot, but Negatron's good for Quicksilver or for like Dragon Claw. Um, so I'm gonna, I don't know if you guys knew this, but if you have a full bench and you take a unit off a of carousel, that unit actually goes on your board and you'll see the six out of five thing. So we're gonna abuse this a tiny bit this game. I'm not sure if you guys knew about this before, but if you didn't, now you know. You can get an extra unit. The only downside is that you can't reposition anyone on your team and you can't sell anyone on your bench. So when you do this, do not sell anyone on your bench until you win the round, and then you could go ahead and do it. I'll show you guys right here. Again, this Diana is so strong, we sell someone and then buy the Silas that we needed. This way, the Yumi stays on the board, and sometimes it glitches out if you sell something in the middle of the round. One of the units on your board gets put on your bench, so you don't want that to happen. Always wait till the fight ends before you do this. All right, so here again, we would like the Katarina. We could even use the Morgana because we want Morgana later for Dazzler, but we're not going to touch a thing here. So again, let's skip ahead because we want the extra Yumi in, in the board right now. She's going to be doing like, even like a tiny heal is going to help us, especially since we're on this big win streak. All right, so now that after we kill this person, uh, come on, come on. All right, this is when we sell, buy, sell, and buy. Just do that. Keep doing that because we're not going to level up for a while. Okay, so we missed it there, but uh, we got the Diana. I'm going to stop abusing the Yumi thing because we can't do it anymore. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and complete the Diana there. Play the Akali. We don't level up yet because normally when you hit like a desired three star, like if you're playing Yasuo and you hit three star Yasuo, you generally level up right away, but we still need this Lissandra to three star in order to get the full moonlight bonus. Um, so just something to keep in mind there. We're pretty far from it too, so it's actually a little scary right now. It's not quite as like a free win as some people might think. So we get another sword, which is decent. Uh, we're not building Gunblade. Got another Silas there. So I think we go ahead and want to build the Zeke's Herald. Um, just give Diana as much attack speed as possible. Uh, let's go ahead and roll down to 50. Um, what we were discussing before. Uh, as you can see, we're not hitting any of these Lissandras. We got some Silas's, but like this Lissandra is very, very far away. Um, here I'm debating if I should just level up and give up on the Diana and go for like Talon carry with like a Diana three star to carry me through the mid game. Um, but I definitely should be building the Zeke's Herald here. For some reason I don't. Um, I definitely should be building that. So let's go ahead and skip ahead. Um, oh, did I skip ahead too much? Oh, I went backwards back soon. All right, so now we're on to the next thing. Uh, we go ahead and try to roll down even more again. Uh, we got the Akali 2 star, which is nice. There's the Lissandra finally. Go ahead and pick that up. Nothing in this shop, nothing in this shop. We got the Katarina. Uh, you don't need to complete that Katarina, but we do want her eventually. I don't really care about 3 star Katarina because it's kind of... Like, not useless, but it's just not that strong. Um, I don't even think it's worth the gold that we're, like, paying for it. 
Um, but yeah, we just roll down to 50. We see like no Lissandra's very, very, very unfortunate because we definitely need her later in the game. Uh, so we actually take a loss here because this Nami was really, really strong, but it's okay. Not the end of the world there. I will skip ahead again. All right, so roll down to 50 again. We found one Lissandra that we missed earlier. Um, after that roll down, I'm sorry. Like, I'm skipping around and it's skipping some of the rolls, but um, we did hit one Lissandra there, so we'd need like three more before we level up. Unfortunately, not hitting it. We almost have the Silas, though, which is really nice. I think I do want this Morgana, yeah. Go ahead and sell the Akali, because Akali's not going to be one of my primary carries yet. I have no idea why I'm not building the Zeeks yet. We should build it on Talon and put it next to the Diana. Okay, we end up, end up doing that here. I don't get the swap off in time because I am a boomer. Um, but let's see how Diana does in this fight. One auto, two autos with the help of Katarina. She was able to kill that. Like everything else, she's been like one tapping, right? It's like IE is just so good. Imagine if she's four star, it's going to do deal even more damage. Okay, nice, nice. Akali stayed alive there. Oh, nope. Ion Ionic Spark killed her. Here's a tricky point, because like we could level up and still potentially hit this Lissandra, but it's really tough to make that call, in my opinion. Um, but here we want the Critical Strike, or the, sorry, the Brawler's Glove, because we want to get Quicksilver for Diana. Unfortunately, we don't get that. All these items are taken. So we have a Negatron and a Bow. So after that, I wanted like a tier to build Chalice of Power, but we don't get that either. So I'm just going to go ahead and build the Dragon Claw with that extra Negatron Cloak. So we go into the next shop. We get the Silas 3, which is obviously really good. Um, we definitely want to put that in. And the Lissandra in for the Moonlights again. That way, Lissandra's three star uh, and the Silas is three star. So it's actually like a pretty strong team. We're going to roll as much as possible now um, to try to finish this. What's her name? The Lissandra. But we're just really not hitting her. Really, really unfortunate. Um, yeah, so I just level up instead. Um, so I try to save my health. We can still hit the Lissandra. It's just like we're so far from it that that's the reason why I leveled up. We could have waited one more turn to do it. But um, since we had a bunch of two stars on our bench, I really just wanted to play something. Uh, but maybe it was a mistake. I'm not really too sure. Um, but yeah, our team is looking pretty nice. But like, again, you really need four star uh, Diana. Uh, so we still need a roll. All right, I think she cleans this up, right? Oh, wow, she did not win that one. Man, Aurelia's strong. <laughs> we we played her in all our other games, right? But uh, not this one. Um, so we're back here, back where we started. Um, I rolled down again here. I'll, I'll show you guys again. I accidentally skipped ahead. Um, I probably should have built Dragon Claw on Diana. We would have won that last game, right? But I think I was greeting for the Quicksilver Sash. Um, just because I wasn't quite sure what to play yet. Oh, yeah, and we also forgot to put in Dazzlers last game. We had five Assassins instead of the Morgana. That's another mistake that I made. Um, but since the turn was winding down so quickly, I just had to, like, react really quickly because I was too busy, like, thinking about my turn um, during that time. Uh, Talon to Chosen. That's really, really strong. I'm surprised he doesn't put the bow on Talon. I would have done that just because it's probably always going on him. Um, but I didn't count as items, so I guess I shouldn't be too quick to judge. We also put the Zeeks back on our Diana. We forgot to do that in the other rounds, but we finally have it there. That's going to be a big power spike for her. Got two Talons pretty easily. Pretty lucky, but we don't really need the Talon. He literally doesn't matter. He's just there to give an Assassin buff. Uh, we really just need this Lissandra, which we're pretty far from. So I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead. We got another Cloak. Unlucky. Um, but Dragon Claw is still decent, right? You could also build Runons here, but uh, they're both fine. Uh, I'd, I'd say they're like about the same power level. I'm rolling down. I'm trying to hit Pikes. I, I wanted to uh, all in here because we like we just really need this Lissandra because we're getting like way too weak right now. Uh, we're gonna get outscaled by all the people who are leveling up right now and like to level eight and rolling down. Uh, we get Pike on the way there, and we are one off Lissandra now. 
I ran out of time, so I'm going to go ahead and build the Dragon Claw on Diana and the Runons on uh, Talon. Uh, just because he's like the only other person to itemize. You could have built Runons on Diana, that would have been good too. But I do like having one defensive item, uh, especially against this guy. She took like no damage from this Jinx, even though she got hit twice. Alright, good job on the win here. But yeah, I right now we're just trying to find the Lissandra and then we're going to power level up to fit in six assassins again. I have this Katarina and Akali on my bench. Maybe I should have sold them to get more economy. But the thing is, it really depends because if I hit the Lissandra, I'd want them back. So it's risky if you sell them. But I have seen some players do those types of plays or they just don't buy them to begin with. Luckily, we get the guys there. So um, I want to go ahead and level up as soon as possible. Um and then play six assassin because that is such a big power spike. Uh, do I end up doing it here? I think I do, and I bench Morgana and put her back in later. Uh, just because like Morgana doesn't really matter because the only person that matters on my team is this silly Diana who's gonna absolutely demolish people right now. Uh, let's see how well she does it. You do have to try to position a little bit. You do want to like jump towards people's carries, but like. I'm like too strong right now, so it really, <laughs> it really didn't matter. Um, and we're at like 78 health, so I was probably a little lazy. But you do want to be scouting, keeping track of all your matchups. If you guys didn't know, you could only play up to three players each round. Um, so you can't play all the players you faced last up until you can narrow it down to three players. So right now there are eight players in the game, which means I have seven potential opponents. You could only have three per round, so the last four people I faced you can't face again when there are eight people alive. Every time someone dies, that number goes down by one. I go over this in my tips and tricks video, which I'll probably remake for set four. Um, but if you guys haven't seen that, I'll try to remember to leave a link in the description below. If I like don't, just like comment about it and I'll let you know which video it is. But like, if you guys have been on the channel before, you guys have already seen it a bunch of times. Um, but yeah. See, there I was uh, trying to position. We got unlucky. We hit the guy who was on the other side. Um, sometimes that happens when you scout and you get like punished for scouting. Because <laughs> we would have been in a better position otherwise. But it doesn't really matter. Our Diane is just too strong right now. So right now we keep this Morgana on, a, on our bench because we want to put in Dazzler at level 8. Uh, there's really nothing else to put in. Like Ezreal 2-star would be better, but like <laughs> you're not... <laughs> You're not getting that. Uh, so here, Ludens is good. Morello's good. Bloodthirster's good. Uh, even like another Runons is good. I could go for any of these. Um, I end up going for the Morello Namacon for my Lissandra because Lissandra is still like a decent carry. Uh, even at three star, she's still good. She's going to want as many ability power items as she can. Um, but let's go ahead and skip ahead. I actually end up saving this for my Morgana. I think that's a mistake. I should just abuse my power spike and put it on my Lissandra. Even though, like, Morello is better on Morgana, um, like, uh, you definitely want the power spike on your Lissandra uh, just to knock people out of the game. Because right now I'm getting zero value from this Morello. Uh, so, like, even though I didn't do it this game, I feel like that is a mistake. But maybe since I had high health, I felt like I could be a little more greedy and use my health as a resource to lose. Um, and then be stronger at like stage six. Uh, there are arguments for both methods. Maybe I was right when I was playing because if I lose these these two rounds, it didn't really matter because I'd be at like 50 life and then I'd have a more powerful team later in the game. So maybe I was right when I was playing and my post-game analysis is not as uh, accurate. But let me know what you guys think. Would you guys have greeted there and put the Morello on Morgana or just waited, or sorry, or just put it on Lissandra right away? Uh, let's go ahead skip ahead some more we got a last whisper not the best item but like throw it on talon whatever uh so we want to level up as soon as possible i should level up here um just to try to knock people out let's see if i end up doing it i'm thinking a lot here but i do end up going for it uh, put the morgana in put the morello on her you pretty much have to level up because like i have an item on my bench sitting doing nothing so Without it, it's kind of useless. All right, here's the next fight. This Nami guy did not last at all. The Talon actually was the one who killed her. And then Diana's there to clean up everyone else. 
this comp is broken, right? It's like we didn't really have to make many decisions this game. All we had was like a Diana chosen early, and then we just rolled down for it. Um, so a lot of these hyper roll comps, like, they're really, really strong. Don't get me wrong. But, like, you can't play them every game. If we didn't get Diana chosen, there's, like, zero chance that we're playing this. Uh, let's go ahead and skip ahead. Next fight. Um, I positioned really well for this guy. My Diana jumped into his Morgana. She only got one ultimate off. Then she's probably going to kill the Azir really quickly. I don't know why he has ZZ Rot on his Azir. That seems kind of wasteful. I don't think you want him tanking, but maybe I am wrong about that. But again, that might be a mistake he made by placing that on him because he thought the attack speed would be better. But when your assassins jump to the back, ZZ Rot taunts people. So like they'll just target the Azir, which isn't what you want. Um, at least I don't think it is. Maybe he wanted it. Uh, next fight here, we don't really have to do anything with our gold. We're just trying to get to level 9 as fast as possible. Since we're at 78 life, like none of this uh, really matters that much because um, we can lose like 3 rounds or 4 rounds and then just go to level 9, get a bigger power spike there. And there's not much to really roll for here. So we're looking for one more item. We could go for like a Lissandra item, we could go for a Morgana item, we could go for a Pike item. Does not really matter. Infinity Edge might have been the best for me since I have six assassins. Like, whenever you have six assassins, Infinity Edge gets, like, infinitely more valuable. Uh, but we end up going for the Ionic Spark there. I think I put it on my Pike. Um, but that item, that last item doesn't really matter too much. But I do think that Infinity Edge on, like, a Kali would have been the best thing to do. Uh, or, like, a mana item for Pike, maybe. Uh, but we'll get go ahead and watch this last fight. He is six Sharpshooter. He does have... Um, two three stars, but yeah, they get countered by assassins. So that was a pretty easy win there, pretty free in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, if you're playing hyper roll, you just got to stick to the strategy and really commit to it. Like perhaps I shouldn't have leveled up to level six at the time I did, but I felt like with all the two stars on my bench, I kind of had to. Um, but yeah, that's one game in diamond. Let's go ahead and check out the next one. All right, let's hop into our last game. I think this is game six, as you guys saw there. It is like a full diamond lobby. Um, so hopefully, if you guys are able to play like how I do in this game, you guys will be able to get to diamond as well. Um, starting items, again, website. You guys you guys already know that now since you're at this point in the VOD. Um, but yeah, I go ahead and grab the sword here. I'm going to try to play Talon. Let's go ahead and skip ahead to the next round. The first round's like you can't really change anything there. Um, we end up getting a Kennen. Kennen's actually pretty strong early game because if you get him with a lease, they pretty much always go off. Or like a Jarvan, for example. Um, you guys already know I like sharpshooters. I see two Wukongs also, so I have potential like Vanguard sharpshooter opener, which I like personally. But like it depends on what your playstyle is, what comps you play later in the game. Um, I, but I just go ahead and pick up everything here. This next shop, we do get the Garen. So that's good for like Vanguard start. Nidalee's good for sharpshooter, so I'm probably gonna go ahead and pick those two up um, and bench the rest of my team. All right, let's see what drops here. We get a bow. We have enough gold again to buy everything, not enough to sell everything to make interest. Uh, whenever you wanna make, in whenever you can make interest in the beginning rounds, you generally want to. Getting this vein's pretty interesting. Uh, maybe I should have done it because like we might have like a three star vein game which is really good, even if it's not Sharpshooter. Um, just because Vayne is a... She got buffed, like, five different times or something like that. I'm exaggerating, but, like, she got buffed a ton, so she's really, really strong right now. Um, but, yeah, just go ahead and do this. Uh, since we have two swords, I'm thinking we can play... What's that comp called? The Talon Composition. Um, so I'm going to try ahead, go ahead and try for that. Um, definitely put the sword on Vayne because I don't think we have the best sharpshooter start right now. Uh, so that's why I go ahead and do that here. Let's skip ahead to the next round. But yeah, I should put a sword on her. I think I just held off just in case we get like a really lucky like sharpshooter chosen pivot. Uh, let's go ahead and skip ahead. Because in those cases, you want the sword on like either Teemo for Zeke's Herald or you want it on Jin. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think that's in the cards this game, so I just go ahead and put the sword on her. Um, I think I should have built Giant Slayer. Giant Slayer doesn't do much early game, but I think I'm always going to be building it because I'm either going Ash or Talon here. Uh, let's skip ahead some more. Um, on this shop, 
not much to get here. Uh, so I want to go ahead and make 10 gold. Uh, so let's skip ahead again. We end up winning this other fight. So now, since we won three in a row, we want to think about win streaking a little bit. Uh, on the carousel, we want either like a belt for Zeke's. I think that'd be really good. Or like a critical strike for Infinity Edge. Both are fine. Uh, Zeke's is a little more flexible. Infinity Edge is better for Talon and Ash. Unfortunately, we get neither. Uh, we could go for... Wait, no, there's a belt there. Oh, I didn't even see it. I wonder why I took the rod here. Hmm. Now I'm confused because looking back, I would have taken a belt without, <laughs> without question. Um, but we end up going for the rod. I'm not really sure why I did that this game. Uh, we definitely want to pick up this chosen Janna here and level up. We're on a win streak. Janna's one of the strongest early game champions. Probably also want to pick up this Kindred and play this Fiora because we get enlightened that way. I think I make the, yeah, uh, I think I make the mistake of not playing her, but I should have dropped either like, oh no, I do play her. Or do I? Hmm. I think I should have played her because Enlightened Janna is just way too strong. So you want to buff her up as much as possible. Um, and whenever you have four items, you generally want to build something. So I think I end up building the Giant Slayer here. Uh, just because you like really, really need it. Oh, maybe I got the rod because I wanted to go for Morello Namakon for Morgana. And I just said, don't go Ash. But looking back, I really think I should have gotten the belt and just built a Zeke's and go for like a flexible comp. Uh, again, like there are many different ways to play the game and you just have to play what you're comfortable with. We got the Teemo there. Not really that useful since we're not going for sharpshooters. Um, I do think I want the Enlightened. Do I end up putting it in? I do not. And for some reason, my entire team's backlined. I don't really know why. Um, yeah, I should probably like put the tanks in front. DPS in the back. I probably ran out of time and just, <coughs> excuse me, um, and just uh, like put the tanks in the front, guys. Don't don't be like me. I probably ran out of time. I had Teemo in and I did a quick swap back in for the for the vanguards or something like that. Or I was scouting this guy and I saw he had assassins. That's probably the more likely reason. All right, so let's skip ahead. This shop here is pretty decent. Um, if we want to go for the Cassiopeia, but like she's not that necessary in the enlightened composition. She's good in like a lot of mystic stuff, but like we don't need for mystic at this point in the game. We end up getting a critical strike, which is exactly what we want. We also get enough gold to get the Cassiopeia, so we go ahead and buy her. Uh, but yeah, infinity edge slam, 100% here. Thresh is good because we want to get him to two star. Um... All right, let's go. Yeah, it was because I was scouting this guy. This guy's the other guy who's wind streaking, and I want my dudes to tank as assassins. Uh, so, like my tanks to tank as assassins. So that's why I backlined everyone before. Um, so there was some logic to my positioning before. I probably should have not fast forwarded at that point, um, so we'd understand why. So here I slam all the items because I want to keep my wind streak up. Whereas before I wasn't too sure if I could even do it, even with the item slam. We end up facing this guy who has no damage, so free win there. Um, you can't build a team with zero damage. Uh, you always want a mix of frontliners and backliners, like damage and tanks. Um, and he had only tanks, so I guess that's like maybe a common mistake people make in Diamond. I'm not actually 100% sure if they don't know that. Um, but yeah, you always want a mix. So yeah, I'm still thinking I'm facing the other guy. That's why I'm kind of backlining people. Um, and I'm trying to figure out where he's jumping with his Akali. So again, when you're wind streaking and you're like facing another wind streaker, always try to see what the other guy's trying to do. We don't face him, so it's whatever. All right, so in this fight, I'll skip forward a little bit. He's got the Lissandra three star, but Chosen Janna, just way too strong. <laughs> but yeah, this guy's got six Warlords. He probably beats me at this point in the game. Um, so let's go ahead, fast forward a little bit. If I faced him in one of these, in like 3-1, I think we would have beat him, but not at 3-2 when he has six uh, Warlords. Oh, and he's got the Talon on his bench. He's actually like way too strong. I'm still going to try to scout him and like position around him, but I highly doubt it's going to work if we do end up facing him. So here he is now. He's got the two-star Akali now, too, so he got pretty lucky. So there goes our win streak. Um, I think it was a close fight, but two-star Jarvan, two-star Akali, six Warlord. 
it's like one of the best early game stuff like as you guys can see here so unlucky there lose our win streak but not the end of the world that means this guy's probably going for first place since he has that oh also notice here it's a pretty bad mistake he's got 20 gold guys like you don't, like, win streaks are important, but they're not that important. He lost three gold to keep, to keep three gold, but he could have had, like, three gold anyways from the interest and uh, have, like, a high chance to win anyways. So he did get a Kali 2 by rolling. He didn't get lucky for getting it. Well, it's still, like, some proportion of luck, but, like, he did pay to get that. And, like, that's just not that great of a trade. It's kind of like a mistake that doesn't happen when you get higher, but like apparently he's doing that. Uh, let's get the Morello here with the belt. Not much else to say there because we want to put it on Morgana. Uh, let's go ahead and fast forward a tiny bit. Uh, here, Jin is really nice because he makes great use of those vein items. So I'm gonna go ahead and itemize him. I also need like someone to use this Morello. I think I should have like played this Cassiopeia and put the Morello on her, but instead I have it on the Nidalee. She still hits two targets with a sharpshooter buff, but it's nothing like that crazy. Uh, we're not gonna level up here. Oftentimes, it only costs me 24 gold to level, and I'd be at 30 gold or 29 gold, and oftentimes you would level there, but since I just lost a round, I have no reason to win this next two rounds, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go for maximum economy instead. Also, I'm gonna keep Janna as my chosen unit. A lot of times you go to level seven to get like a four cost chosen unit, like we had in the Ash game, if you guys remember from like two or three games back. But we already have a Chosen, so there's no reason to go for level seven to get like a four cost Chosen. Pretty lucky there, get the Morgana. It's exactly what you want to see. Not much else to say there. Uh, go ahead and sell this Nidalee. Put the Morello on Morgana. Skip ahead. Uh, this guy's decently strong. He's got the Ash one, but his whole team's one star, so I think we win this. My whole team's one star too, though, so maybe we don't. It's pretty close though, right? Dazzler's so strong. His Ash ended up doing like no damage because of Dazzler buff uh, from the Morgana pool, and I think Lux got her once. That's why whenever you play an attack damage composition, you need to be playing Quicksilver Sash because your units are just not gonna be able to do any sorts of damage uh, if they get Dazzled. So let's go for four enlightened here. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. Um, I went ahead and went up to level seven. I'm still at 50 gold. Uh, I don't think we need to roll here that much. It's still useful too, because we still need the Talon, but I don't think we're like quite that desperate yet. I should have picked up this Ash here. I don't think I end up doing it, but I think Ash is better with these items than Jin. Because I could play like Hunters with it, whereas Jin, I'm not really adding any other synergies with him. Skip ahead a tiny bit. Um, I think I do end up buying this Janna, but you don't really need Janna 3 star ever. Just something to keep in mind. I think I build the blue buff on the Janna because Chosen Janna, super, super strong, and blue buff is just going to make her cast like infinitely. Uh, so that's why I go ahead and build that. It's similar to our Yumi game. If you guys remember, I think it was our like second or third game. That we went over today we built the blue buff on yumi and like that item alone carried us throughout like the entire game uh i'm not sure what i'm doing here i don't really need the cassiopeia i went ahead and bought a zillion here it, we missed it before here i'll go back so we see um but yeah we just buy the zillion there we do want to play zillion eventually we could potentially go for four mystic um I think we roll here because I am really weak and I want like one or two upgrades here before we go into uh, stage five. I keep hitting Thresh. Shen is finally there. Shen's the most critical unit because he gives me... Wait, I skipped him? Why did I skip him there? Whoa. Big mistake on my part. You just play him over Wukong. You get Adept and then you play Zillion for four Mystic. Why did I do that? That's crazy. <laughs> uh, this is why you should review your games because you probably made a bunch of mistakes that you didn't realize uh, that you made alright so that guy gets hit there yeah I really should not have completed this second Janna it's just like not that strong so nothing to do in this shop here we'll skip ahead uh, skip through this fight we have a chain vest so we could go for a sword for Talon 
Uh, that would be the best item. We're last pick, so I doubt that we'll get it. Uh, but we'll skip ahead. So there is a sword available. Does the other guy take it? He does. So we just grab the bow. Uh, bow is good for last whisper for Talon. If you go like infinity edge, last whisper, always going to be a super strong item combo. Uh, but we'll skip ahead here. Um, I just spend my excess gold into the levels. Do we level up here? It costs 32 to level. We'll be at 20 life. Since we're 79 health, I don't think we need to do it. Um, just because we, again, like we've learned this, we talked about this in all our previous games. You want to use your health as a resource. And since we have a lot of health, uh, we're not like that concerned about like rolling down. So we might as well convert our health into more gold. Uh, go ahead, skip ahead here. We just found the Lux on the next shop. That's why you saw the shiny thing. And we also pick up an extra Morgana. Uh, the comp, if you guys need to get a refresher on what belongs in every comp, just go head on over to my website, bunnymuffins.lol slash meta. It's in the description below, so you guys should check all that out. Um, it has all my links, including my like Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. Um, let's skip this next fight. Um, I don't even remember what happened. Looks like we got destroyed, though. This guy pretty much has every unit living, and he's got the Talon, too. We are definitely looking for Talon here, because, uh, well, we need him. Wait, we found him. Okay, he was just in our next shop. How convenient. Uh, go ahead and sell the Jin. We might actually end up getting weaker this way, but we desperately need the Shen again. I should have sold the Cassiopeia for the Shen before, but like for some reason I didn't. I'm really not too sure why. Uh, but let's go ahead and skip ahead through this neutral round. We end up getting Last Whisper, which is perfect, and we get a Locket for Morgana. And we got a Shen in the shop. So super, super lucky. We still aren't strong yet because we're all one star right now. Uh, you want like at least two of your four costs to be two star at this point in the game. I should pick up this Ezreal. There we get the Talon 2. Put the locket on the Morgana because I'm running low on time, but you should probably roll down to like 10, maybe even zero here on this turn. Uh, just something to keep in mind there. The Azir got <laughs> his soldiers are going to be useless, but that's okay. I did not want to play two Janas. I should have played Ezreal over the Azir, I think, because Ezreal has a Dazzler debuff that he'll apply. So that's something that's really, really strong. Uh, let's go ahead and skip ahead. We're still losing. Oh my god, I sold the Ezreal there. <sighs> it's hard, tough to say, because I wasn't really sure what I was thinking at that point in time, but like, Ezreal is 100% better than Azir there. Because you get the Dazzler buff, you, the more people that apply it, the better. Also, Ezreal is just really strong on this patch, so... Azir is also really strong, but... Ezreal is like, one of the main guys. I don't know. Uh, let's go ahead and do the Assassins, because that increases our Talon damage by a lot. He is 2 stars, so I did eventually want that. Uh, no Morgana yet, which kind of sucks, because she has a Locket. Um, we don't need the Legendaries anymore, because we have the Assassin buff for Pike. Uh, from Pike, I mean, which gives our Talon like so much damage. Look at this, he's like one-shotting literally everyone, except for the Bramble Vest guy, uh, which is a Riven. But I think he eventually cleans this up. He's like walking around doing nothing for a while. But yeah, he got the kill finally there. So here we got a plan. Like, do we want to slow roll at level 8 to try to get like Morgana 2 star or like Talon 3 star? Or do we want to go level 9? I think here we want to go level 9 because our whole team is upgraded apart from Morgana and Zillion. And rolling for just two units is a little rough, even though we have two pairs of them. So unless we're low life, I'm not going to roll for them. If we were 20 life or 10 life here, I would roll down to zero right now. But we're not. We're at 41 life. So we could wait like just a tiny, tiny bit longer. Um, why did I roll here? <sighs> I just contradicted everything I said. Again, like when you're playing a game, it's different. But looking back at the anal like analyzing it right now, I really think I should not have rolled there. Um, because like we have so much life. Well, not that much, but like we have a pretty sizable amount, right? So I really don't know why I rolled there. I probably panicked because um, our team's like this Talon kills everything. He's got the three most damage items in the game, so he could kill anyone. He kills every tank and kills every squishy. So it's like I have the zillion to give him uh, resurrection. So there really was no reason to roll there. All right, we want this uh, locket. 
on the Lilia to put on Morgana. So we'll go ahead, skip ahead. It's there for us, so we take it. If you don't get that, maybe like a Sunfire Cape would have been good on someone, maybe like your Shen or Aurelia. Uh, so it wouldn't have been the end of the world if we didn't get it. You could even put like Titans on Morgana. That wouldn't be like too, too terrible. Uh, obviously, Locket's the best, but we we need our level two. All right, we're one off Janna now, so I would probably roll here because uh, we we have three things we could have hit instead of just two from before. Uh, all right, so we roll down to zero here, trying to get the last Janna because the Janna three star, it is a big power spike, but whatever. Don't end up hitting it. We also really need this Morgana because we got two lockets on her. If you guys didn't know, locket. It gives you a higher shield the higher level the unit is so you always want to put it on like your two star or even like three star champions if you can help it um let's see how this fight goes we're pretty well positioned like by the time lux ults uh quicksilver sash should be gone quicksilver only lasts i think 10 seconds um so by the time it wears off like lux should be able to ult and stun the ash in some games I've seen, it depends. Like sometimes Lux casts really quickly if she takes a little bit of damage, but uh, just one of the interactions to kind of keep in mind. Like Morgana, Morgana's ult's gonna hit the Quicksilver, but maybe her second ult will hit the will hit the Ash when it wears up. But it really depends on the fight and how much damage they take take and how much uh, uh, mana they gain. Notice how the six Warlord guy from before. He's actually this 12 health guy right now. He somehow threw the game. He definitely should have won because whenever you go Warlords, you generally do like a fast nine strategy um, because he was win streaking so hard, but he ended up losing all his gold. So I really wonder what he did. Probably because he kept Akali in. I would have replaced Akali long ago. He went for three star Akali. He could have just went level nine instead and like sell his chosen unit and go for like a legendary chosen unit. So I think he definitely threw this game. Like, this was his game to win. But now he's out. He got... Fourth place? Fifth place? This guy threw a first place into a fifth place. Um, if you guys want to know how he should have played, check out the last game. Uh, where... No, not last game. I think it was, like, two games ago. Where, like... Remember the dude who complained about our legendaries? That should have been someone telling that to him this game, but it didn't end up happening because he didn't reach level 9, even though he had infinite gold. Eh, sucks for him. Um, what item did we get? This guy got a Last Whisper, kind of useless. This guy got Frozen Heart, decent. Um, what did we end up getting? This guy got a Sunfire Cape. That's actually pretty good because he could put it on his Silas, who's going to live for a very long time. We had... Uh, Ionic Spark. Oh, man. Ionic Spark late game, not that great. And it doesn't really help anyone on our team. Yone is going to be really good. Uh, I'm debating whether we should go level 9 at this point because we have this Yone to put in. Hmm. Or should I roll down for this Janna? I think it might be roll down because we're only one off both Morgana and Janna. All right. But after this, it's like, do we roll for the Janna? I, I really don't know because it's just one unit. It is an upgrade, but like whenever you're rolling for just one unit, it's going to cost us like this whole 40 gold. Like, I don't know the exact math, but like never roll for just one unit, you know? I guess we could have upgraded Shen. Maybe we should have rolled to zero here because we're looking for Shen and Pike. Uh, like Pike's doesn't really matter, but Shen could matter. Um, yeah, maybe we should have rolled. The thing is like... I'm 41 health, this guy was 33 health, so we have like probably a couple fights between each of us. So I probably could have saved up to get 60 gold to reach level 9 and then add in Yone. So I think that was my thought process behind not rolling for this last Janna. Alright, so now three people left. So next turn I can level up, 64 gold. Go ahead and skip ahead here. I'm just looking out for positioning. There's not much to position around because I have the locket in my front line. I just want to make sure my Aurelia is in front of enemy teams and my Talon isn't hitting a tank. So here, he's probably going to hit the Morgana. Oh, we can't see it, but... Um, I think he got taunted by the Shen or something like that. I didn't quite see the start of the fight. But my Talon somehow died. But my Morgana might be able to carry? Nope. Okay, this guy destroyed us. Holy cow. 
So I should have been watching this fight to see why I would lose, but uh, we'll go ahead and go up to level 9 now. We'll get slightly stronger, uh, so it's not the end of the world. We're down one gold, so I think we have to sell one of the Janas. I ended up doing that right, yeah. Leveled all the way up, sold a Janna. It hurts, but like, it's a bigger, like, it's a pretty big upgrade to get this Yone in, right, for three Adept. Because uh, no one has Quicksilver Sash, right? So Adept works really well against teams without Quicksilver Sash. Because they're just going to attack so much slower than they normally would. Uh, this is bad. My Zillion got targeted by the Talon. You never want that to happen. I should have hid my Zillion somewhere else away from the Talon. It's okay if Janna or Lux dies, but not my Zillion. Hmm. We didn't see any Ezreals this game after we sold the first two, right? I wish I could have played Ezreal somehow. But yeah, we ended up beating that guy, which is really nice. There are a lot of talent players this game. So I could go for the Yone, but I think Zephyr is just the best because he doesn't have Quicksilver. So I could just target Zephyr his Zed. Not his Zed, his Talon, and just win the game after that. <clears throat> Another interesting choice would have been Hat for Zillion, because then he'll heal everyone to full health after they revive. So I just am going to move my Pike to hit his Zed or his Yone. Both are really good targets, um, and that will hopefully win me the game. Because Zed's his... Or why do I keep calling Talon Zed? It's because they're both assassins, but you just need a Zed for him. So I'm just going to put Pike wherever he is. Uh, I don't even care that I lost the isolation bonus there. And then we just put that on him there. Zephyr the Talon, and yeah, probably win the game after that. He does have Yone too. That's actually really scary, but like, he did no damage to me because I have four Mystic. And that's GG. All right, so hope you guys enjoyed this series. Um, let me know if I should do more of these in the future. Like, maybe you guys want to see how to get to Masters. Um, Maybe something even more beyond that. But I feel like Diamond's a good starting point there. Um, we played one game at each ELO. One in bronze, one in silver, one in gold, one in platinum, one in diamond. Or two in diamond, actually. So you guys got a bonus game there. But let me know what you guys thought about this format. If you guys learned something, go ahead. Subscribe below if you guys are new. Like the video if you enjoyed it as well. Um, check out my uh, all my socials in the description below. Um, but yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I went through like pretty much all of my decision making in like six different games I think we did. Um, so definitely like go back, review some of these games again if you guys didn't catch everything the first time. If you guys like follow this, you guys probably will hit Diamond. TFT, it's like a lot of people don't get it because a lot of the co concepts are like kind of counterintuitive. But like once you understand them, like once you have all the basics down, like I didn't really do anything special in all these games, right? I kind of just made very basic decision making and we won all these games like pretty easily in my opinion. Um, it's things like, oh, should we roll here? Should we level here? Let's check out our health and use that as a decision um, factor to see whether we should do any rolls. Uh, it's like a lot of basic stuff. Do we have a mix of frontline and backline? We saw a lot of teams that didn't have a mix of that. Like there's this guy with like six brawlers out with no damage items. Like, if you guys avoid all those mistakes and all these tiny little silly mistakes, I promise you guys, like, you guys will climb. Similar to this guy who got fifth place in this game, he should have won the game. He was win streaking the entire game with Warlords. Warlords are probably one of the easiest win streak teams in the game because you just go fast level eight, fast level nine, sell some of your Warlords to get to um, two star legendaries. But, like, he's playing Nidalee in the late game, you know? It's like, you don't need to have nine warlords to do well. Like six is perfectly fine. Even three is perfectly fine. I would have rather just like leveled up, played the legendary units like we did in that. Um, I think it was an Ash game where we had like four two star legendaries. But like a lot of people don't realize that the guy cursed me out in that game. And then this guy didn't play like how he should have. Um, I, I don't mean to single this guy out. Like all these, like even I was making a ton of mistakes this game. But um I guess me making mistakes, it just goes to show that you don't need to play perfectly to get to diamond either. It's like very basic stuff we're doing here. So as long as you get all the fundamentals of the game down, you guys should be able to climb.
But thanks so much for watching. If you guys like stuck through the whole thing, shout out to you guys. Um, go ahead again, check out all the links below and I will see you guys next time.